Everybody, hey, welcome for uh, another week of awesome comic talk. Um, yeah, I like it when it unplugs me. Um, uh, we are here live at Bat City Comic Professionals on Austin's East Side. As usual, I am Shannon, aka Small Press Shan, and I am here with my buddy and partner in comics, uh, the great Philip, aka Wednesday Phil. <laughs> How are you? I am very tired. Yeah? This is going to be the toughest live stream I do. Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. It's I, it? I'm struggling, very little sleep, and um, maybe some minor excessive alcohol abuse last night. You know that happens? Yes. Mm -hmm. We all hit those moments. And of course, here I am back to drink more alcohol. Yay! So wine! <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> it's a nice change of pace, though, from tequila. And oh, I had yeah. my first four loco last night. Ever? Ever. I had a rule that I was never going to drink one. And, and now then I was forced to. So. And, and it was it was awful. Uh, it tastes like Red Bull. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of that. I'm not at all, so. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I, for that very, the very reason. Oh, you, the time is, the date and the time and everything on this are all wrong on your, it didn't take your, uh, <laughs> your changes for the name. Just, I was like, what, this video doesn't exist. Yeah. I kept trying to find it. Anyway, well, I'll let Matt figure that out. Uh, yeah, I can't. Anything that has obviously a uh, caffeine and stuff in it, like, is yeah. is a no go for me. Um, but that's just it's not good. Anyway, uh, no, so not at all. I'm glad you survived um, um, and are here sure. to drink yeah. some some wine with us. Yes, how are you? Good. Um, glad that comics made it. I know it was. We'll talk about that later and how it was a crazy week. We didn't know if we were going to be having this live stream. Yes. There was a point. Well, it would have been a very small, small live stream. Yes. Yeah. So, so happy that there is something to talk about this week. Um, and uh, the first thing is, of course, talking about this uh, Splendid Oak Cellars. This is a cab salve from California, and it is. Um, full of black notes of black cherry, eucalyptus, and spice, and it followed by flavors of ripe blackberry with a touch of licorice. So I don't know if it was the last live stream or the one before where it seemed like it was going down so smoothly for mm -hmm. y'all, and I was struggling greatly with that. That was two weeks ago. Last week is the one you liked. This one, I think, may be my favorite now. Mm. It's the smoothest, and it's not too intense. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. This is, like we said, Splendid Oak. It's a cab sab. It's very, it is very smooth. It's got a lot of different, it definitely has a lot of flavors. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, I guess you can kind of tell a little bit. I was, the eucalyptus is the one that I was like, how does that blend into this? Mm. But yeah, you can kind of taste it. It's, it is good. It's very fruity. Yeah. I'm going to hand this over to you. Yes. Get it over. Do you want to cover it? With something I don't know what no okay well you know I tried um, so yeah so comics time um, just before we go too far into like what we were talking about but or what's coming out I guess what we were talking about is this week of course um, I guess last week Diamond uh, the comic distributor at this point for all of the major indie comics mm -hmm. um, and and not for the the big two um, Diamond had ransomware put on their website, which, if you don't know, means somebody literally takes your website hostage, locks you out of it, and the only way to, like, get back your website and all of your server, essentially, it's not just your website, but your entire server, the only way to get it back is to pay them whatever amount of money they put on it. That's messed up. Yeah. So that happened in Diamond, which meant they couldn't pull anybody's uh, invoices, they couldn't create any order like reorders they couldn't do make ups shipments because they couldn't like track it and like put it like you know document it and make it a thing right so they couldn't do anything and it was and of course we couldn't make any orders we couldn't look up books for people and tell them when we were coming out we were all actually super nervous that we wouldn't even get to do a, the final order cutoff on monday if they didn't get it back but thankfully they they were able to, to get the the um the, fine, the system back before then, but what's crazy was, like, 
they were kind of just like, we got it all back on the, ex- like, the side that you see. Like, the external side isn't really back, and, like, not all of our system pieces are back. So we have no idea, like, when you'll get your comics. And so we got a list, like, we got an invoice one day, and then we got our tracking numbers, but it was just, like, a label has been created, and then, like, two days later, our books were here. And we had no, like, there was nothing that said, like, as far as UPS still said, like, we didn't know if they were coming or not. And so I was like, oh, there's no comics today, like, nothing's coming. I was, like, about to give up on my, my waiting time that I usually have for the post, like, the drops, and so I was like, oh, I'll just, like, go get the store ready to open or whatever, and it was, like, 11.05, and there's a knock on the door, or there was the sound of the car, it wasn't even the knock on the door, and I was like, that sounds like UPS, and I opened the door, and he's like, I got your boxes for you, and I was like, what (laughs) boxes? You're not even supposed to be here today, and he's like, yeah, here they are, like, the new guy's bringing them in for you, and I was like, oh, this is my shipment, and I look at it, and I'm like, how fast can I do this so people can actually come get their comments? Yeah. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it as fast as possible. And I literally felt like the flash because I was like running, like I ran and got my gloves, and then I like opened the boxes and I was like putting them on the table. And I'm very glad that Diamond is just indie comics now because if it's still all of the comics in the whole <laughs> yeah, world, there's been tough. it would I would have like posted we weren't opening anytime soon, but just like. The indie comics and, like, so many delays, I was able to actually get it done before we opened, and I was like, this is amazing. I feel so accomplished right now. Well, I'm always glad when the indie books show up. It's tough for me to enjoy New Comic Book Day with just the big two. Yeah, I gotta have it all. Like, I need need my indies, and I'm so glad that they made it and that we now have stuff to talk to you about. Some good ones, too. Yeah. Some, Some of our personal favorites were out this week. Yeah. And, uh, including a new number one that is also a personal favorite of mine. Already. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, I guess we'll kick it off by giving you a prize and then. Prize! Uh, just I look forward to this every week. Right. With a view, just this. <laughs> just, just that, that sound effect. Um, I'm actually going to give out a. A Six Sidekicks of Trigger Keaton number one. This is issue one of a series we're going to be talking about later tonight. And um, we're going to start with a... Do you know we're going to start with a super easy question? Um, John Liguizamo is known for playing what image comic character uh, <laughs> in, in the movie adaptation of a very big image book? <laughs> um, if you can tell me what character John Liguizamo played... Uh, from the image comic character, what image comic character John Lugalzama played in the I can't tell you name of movie, or it makes yes. it even easier than it already is. There aren't a lot of image comic based movies, so it's pretty easy question. Also, one of his many great roles. Yeah. Was in that film. It's true. He was in one of the Day of the Dead or Dawn of the Dead sequels. I think it was called Land of the Dead. Yeah, Diary of the. One of those. Oh, it's something. Land of the Dead. It was. The yeah. Land. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he he had a nice fun role in that one. I enjoyed. <laughs> I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh! Did Gomez answer it? Yes, yeah. Gomez, you got it. It was the Violator in the Spawn movie. So Gomez, you are getting a copy of Six Sidekicks of Trigger Keaton, and I hope you enjoy it because this book is hilarious. Um, yes, and it's over now. Yes. So you can come in and get all the rest of the issues if you enjoy the first one. Also, uh, Gomez, I don't mind that the Falcons lose in football. It's not a big deal. The Braves winning makes up for every sports season to ever exist in my lifetime. Oh, there you go. So but I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to dive into some comics. Uh, apparently we're going to... Oh, the yeah. pa- it's missing missing okay well we're gonna dive into some comics anyway um <laughs> we're gonna talk about new this week's uh th- yeah i it's we uh ended six sidekicks of sugar keaton this week this is uh issue six of six six sidekicks of sugar keaton uh 
if you haven't been following along, Phil and I will tell you that this is a hilarious book. Um, it's got... We, I always say it's like a parody of a Quentin Tarantino movie yes. instead of being a Quentin Tarantino movie. But this is uh, the Chuck Norris type guy is dead and all of his former sidekicks who were treated terribly by him have come together <laughs> yes. to figure out who murdered him and uh, why. And we finally see where and how and all of those details in this last issue yes it all comes together and i don't know if i want to show any of the interior because the whole issue is the reveal mm -hmm. uh which is great i'm happy that we finally got to see the end yeah <laughs> of who did it um i would say that as much as i enjoyed this last issue they this felt like it wrapped up really quickly. Yeah, it like does. Like, the last issue was a, was a book that really didn't have any... Like, it, it, it had no effect on the story. Yeah, no, not at so all. So you kind of get this, like, big, fun issue, and then all of a sudden, it's like, all right, here's the ending, here's who did it, right. and here's... And they just figured it out. Like, I'm like, when did they figure it out? Because I don't recall us figuring it out, but suddenly they were there and they knew it, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there thinking, like, okay in between all the jokes and the weird fight sequences that I miss some mm -hmm. like conversation between two two people that somehow figured it out but it was like one did. yeah one character just kind of walked up and was like I don't know who did it let's go yeah and it was like oh <laughs> okay well all right then cool you know and uh I don't so <laughs> let's yes. just go and and it and it was <clears throat> fine I didn't care that that was missing right like I thought you know usually I'm like oh that was a giant plot hole and suddenly we're here but that's not what the point of this book was no ever and so like even this issue and the way they wrap it up I'm like I'm not really sure what route they took um, uh, when they were given a couple of options. I'm like, I'm not really sure which way they actually chose to go, uh, but I'm still 100% in. I can't. The, the whole thing is a spoiler to who, the whole who thing done it. is literally the big reveal. So, yeah, we can show, if you wanted to see the art styles, you want to show them just one of the other copies that's right behind you so they can see, like, the, yeah, what, what six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton looks like, because the art on it is a lot of fun. And uh, I love that. I mean, you. I guess we could show you even this. Like, there's an IMDb page at the back, but uh, no, I can't because that's that spoiler. Before that, but yeah, I yeah. mean, we've shown the art to these books before. This is issue five. This is basically a one giant fight scene, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a great. It's a fun issue. Uh, all of these characters, the relationship between all of them is really great. And this is definitely one of those is not about the destination, it's about the journey. Mm -hmm. That is what this book is about. So don't finish reading this series and think, oh my gosh, you know, this is saga level storytelling. Yeah, it's or, not ever going to, yeah. You know, this is more of just something fun to read in between Hickman's X-Men, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and it's definitely worth it. This was one of my favorite books. Um, I had a, a great time and I'm hoping that there's more of this. Me too. We could keep going with this and it could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd be down for it. If you want to keep doing these six issue mini series that are, you know, just kind of wonky, I'm always on board. Speaking of kind of wonky uh, and more about, I feel like it's going to end up being about the destination or the journey, not the destination, but Witch Blood issue eight is out. Uh, this is a vault title. And it's not on the Nightfall imprint. A lot of the times when we talk about Vault, we almost always talk about Nightfall. Right. This is, it's just an actual regular Vault title. And I love this story because I always say it's a Scott Pilgrim, like witches in a Scott Pilgrim style story. And it very much is. It's an ancient battle between uh, witches and vampires. And the vampire, like the main vampire knows that if he drinks the blood of a witch, he basically becomes a god. And so he's been on the hunt to find a witch that, like, this witch goddess, essentially, that he could drink her blood and become a vampire god and rule over all of the dominions. And at this point, we're very deep into this this battle. And it, it is, it's, it's kind of comical. Like, nobody's really serious at, like, any necessarily given time. Like, the main witch, she's like, yeah, I'm, like, you know, eight cantos years old, year old witch but like also i just want to ride around on my motorcycle with my crow and like tell everybody <laughs> to like you know screw you and so it's a it's a lot of 
It's a lot of fun. There's random jokes, but now we're actually like in the heart of this battle, so we're trying to figure it out. I would be surprised if this was more than 12 issues, given that we are at issue 8 right now, and we're kind of figuring out how we can go back and stop this this terrible tragedy that's happening and all the mm -hmm. stuff that's been attacking them. So I feel like we're not going to see more than 12 issues out of this. Um, one of my favorite things though, about the series is that they do these tarot card covers, and the artist on the book is actually the artist on of the modern witch tarot deck. Oh, okay. So the she's actually drawing like this witch book and she's doing these witch these witch covers, uh, these tarot covers, and she is actually the person who does the Modern Witch Tarot deck. So it's super cool because it's almost like a story to go with those cards. Right. So um, I, I love I love the art. I love the way the story has kind of unfolded. I, I, at the very beginning, I know you read the first couple issues, and you were like, I don't really know if this is going anywhere that I need to go. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, this is one of those where I'm going to wait and see. Like, I'm definitely here more for the art than the story. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm like, ooh, where is this story going? Like, now I'm invested in the story a lot, and I want to know, like, if we're going to solve the problem. It's got three badass female characters. We've got, like, a witch hunter and, a, you know, a witch, and then this other character who kind of falls somewhere in between. Um, and it all takes place in Texas, so it's kind of a fun, just little, little adventure story, kind of like six sidekicks. Like this isn't going to be one of those where you're like, oh, it's oh, like this is the most profound, like prolific. I need to sit there and evaluate every word of it. Mm -hmm. Like this is a fun book, and if you're looking for something that's just absolutely fun, has a little bit of humor, um, and great art, uh, this is definitely Witch Blood from Vault is definitely it, and uh, uh. It's one of those, like, teams where they're also, like, I believe they're actually a couple, too, like Matthew Ehrman and Lisa Stoll. I think they're okay. actually a couple, so it's fun to see when those kinds of couples come together to write their stories. Uh, I have to say the colors in this book is yes. next level. This is one of those colors that I, I think that's Gab? Yeah, Gab Contreras. Gab Contreras. This, that'll be a name that I'll pick up a book if I see it. Mm -hmm. Also, based on how nice the Rockstars trade was... I'm hoping that this is only 12 issues and we mm -hmm. just get a full trade of that. Have all the tarot card covers in the back. I mean, we're on issue 8 and I don't have a trade yet, so maybe we will just get a complete series trade. Oh, that would be... That's all I ever want. Just yeah, complete series just trades. complete series trades. Uh, speaking of people who do complete series trades, uh, <laughs> AWA Upshot has a, a new book out this week with Telepaths. This is issue 3 of 6. I will always argue that I don't know if this is in the Resistance universe or not. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not, but it's J. Michael Straczynski, and it's about super-powered people, and they, like, so it feels like it should be, but right. they didn't get their powers from the virus. These are people who got the ability to read minds or control minds through a solar flare. Hmm. Um, this is a very wordy book. I noticed that. Yeah, <laughs> every time I read this book, I'm like, this is one I'm probably not getting filled to read this week. Um, but it's a good book, and where we are right now is, you know, there was a solar flare, and it caused a whole bunch of people throughout the world to get telepathic powers. Some of them learn to, some of them became able to read minds. Some of them are starting to realize that they can do some telekinetic, like, stuff with it, too. Mm -hmm. And... We see how quickly we move as a people to kind of use that in whatever way we find beneficial. Like, we've got a lot of, in this issue, we find a lot of, a prison, section of a prison has, like, broken out, and they've gone back to their normal neighborhood, and they've now taken over this neighborhood and are, like, using it as, like, hey, we're gonna, you know, we're, this is where we take our stand for now, and we're, like, okay, let's learn what powers we have, let's get ready to go against the people, and so this is, like... We're seeing a lot of that, like, okay, I can use my powers for, like, my benefit mm -hmm. versus, like, I can use my powers to help others versus I am, like, a pawn in the system and I just use my powers because they told me to. We're already seeing that three issues in, and I think that just is kind of to the strength of J. Michael Straczynski as a writer is he... Like, I feel like J. Michael Straczynski has everything mapped out before he ever starts a book. And it's just like, okay, this is, like, I only have six issues, so here's where this has to happen, and this is where this has to happen, because everything always feels so controlled. I never wonder if he's going to run out of room to yeah, tell his right. story or anything like that, because he's always very controlled on 
exactly what he wants to do and what time frame. Which, it probably comes from writing for the big two. And right. you get those mini series yeah. or you get a short arc and you have to be able to tell your entire story before somebody... And leave it in a place where somebody else can take over. And I think that that's a, a big strength that he definitely has. And he's the one that's kind of overseeing the Resistance stuff, correct? Yeah, he created the Resistance okay. universe for AWA Upshot. And most of the titles are written by him. And some of the spinoffs within that are not. But he's doing the like main, like overarching story of the Resistance universe. So Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like he probably got a chance to see a lot of how world building works within Marvel, mm -hmm. especially... So I think it's cool that he's taking it over to AWA and he's kind of building his own world. Yeah. Also, Steve Epting art is... Yeah, it's great that's art. That's also just a plus. Yeah. This has been a really good story, and I can't wait to see, like, is he going to wrap it up? Because with AWA Upshot, they, they label them of however many are going to go into the trade. Right. You know, so with this being of six, it's like, oh, well, that's just, that's just season one or volume one. So it could end up being that it is actually... A two-part series we don't know yet but mm -hmm. I, I'm curious to see like are we gonna is this gonna be everything or is there gonna be more because how many universes of superheroes can you build at one time and are you gonna connect them at some point right like bring them together in yeah. some Avenger style I'm curious to see or is this like his DC to his Marvel basically in mm. his indie in his indie world so um Speaking of cool people, like cool imprints of publishers, Black Caravan, uh, which is a scout imprint, has uh, just launched a new number one. This is Provenance of Secrets, and we've been talking a lot about detective, like noir stories, and this is another yes. one. And it's done almost, I don't know that there's actually any dialogue. I think it might be entirely narration. I couldn't, I was going to go back and double check and I haven't actually done that yet. Because I think that the whole story in the end was told through uh, narration. And we, I'm like, this is a mystery I'm like completely in on. This is a... Uh, a detective goes and of course everybody's like oh this murder was a suicide and he's like that guy has like a symbol carved into him he definitely didn't carve it on his own and if he did he didn't do it willingly and all he knows about this this person who was he believes to be murdered is that they were an actor in a play that has no name and of course he makes the jokes about like all oh, these pretentious like actors why can't they just give their play a name like why are they trying to show so you know you can just it, it can call it can have a name and he has all the commentary so you get to know him very right. quickly because it is all done through narration um but then he goes into the theater and the director has all the actors on stage and i love this scene because he's like all the actors are on stage and he's like well what are they doing and the director's like they're just going through the motions and he's like well what's the show about because the symbol is on the stage and all this stuff that he saw carved into the body and he's like so what is the story about and the director goes they don't know yet they'll get their lines on the night before the night of the show and that's so that it's authentic. They'll be reading the lines for the first time with the audience. And he's like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. Like, what, can't, like, no. Like, and it's just like, he's like, there's something off about this. He's like, where's the script? And he's like, oh, it's locked away. And like, so you instantly feel like this person is the odd one out. And you start to see like, there's something weird about this theater. And it's Black Caravan. So I just know that it's going to get really, really dark. Yes. And definitely. I can't wait that I did not get a chance to read this one, but I it's another one of those imprints that it's like I will blindly follow mm -hmm. all of Black Caravan. And I'm already intrigued. I know it is going to be a lot of reading based on what I'm looking at here, but I am definitely a sucker for the like old school noir voiceover where it's all in his head and you just get to hear him kind of go through this process, which I think is a really interesting thing to do with a yeah. comic. And I'm curious if the whole series is going to be like that. I feel like they could easily do it because what I like about it is when he's in those scenes where he's having a conversation with somebody, like I said, I was like, I need to go back because I don't think the other person ever actually said anything. I think he told me they said this and right. I was like ooh that's interesting that he narrated the whole thing so we're solving the mystery the whole time and we're just in his brain and also that puts us at the complete like reliability of this narrator like cause the whole thing could be crap 
Because all we know is what he's thinking about what right. was said. Well, they told me this. Well, did they really say that? We don't know because there was no dialogue. And I love that. That already brings you, which is something I feel is such a black caravan kind of thing to do, is like you don't even know if your narrator is reliable, but that's the only voice that you have, so you right. just have to go with it. And I, I love that. And um, obviously with a cover like this, I did not expect it to be a, a, noir, a noir story. And so I know that it's going to get... There's going to be something supernatural and dark about this this story very quickly. And you kind of get some teasers into that by the end. Um, but I definitely recommend picking this one up. And because it is Black Caravan, that means you have time to come in and check it out before issue two comes out. Because Scout does the yeah. two-month wait period. So you do have some time to, to get in this one and read it. Um, you can put it on your TV red pile while you go through all your usual books and still have time to catch up before issue two will uh, will drop from that. Yeah, this will definitely be one I read. Because, yeah, you look at that cover and you're not thinking Detective Noir. You're thinking a horror book. Yeah. You know, something supernatural. And uh, I'm here for that. Um, see, of uh, John Legazzano. Yeah, we uh, talked about it. Is John, that why the question was? That was okay. why the question was what it was, because John Legazzano has a book Phenom out for X? Is Image Comics called Phenom X. Um, this was actually announced at the Retailer Summit back in February. Yep. And uh, they announced, you know, Boom announced Keanu doing Berserker, and then uh, Image announced Amelia Clark and uh, John Lugosamo doing their books uh, all in one weekend. And I have actually just kind of been sitting there and waiting to see when, when John's book was actually going to drop. Uh, and I am very glad to see that he uh, is making a book where we actually have a Latinx superhero. Yes. And they they talk about that a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, there's definitely a lot of that conversation about the Latinx, uh, like, prison population and just kind of how, you know, the oppression that they deal with on a daily basis and stuff like that. Uh, I do enjoy that that is kind of the approach mm -hmm. he's taking with this book, um, you know, because I always feel like that was something that was very important to him. Yes. Um, and I, I think it's going to be beneficial having his name on it. Yes. Because that will bring more people in to want to read this book in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that I really like about this book is the dialogue from the character that resembles him it's sounds just, him. just like him. It's just him. And that's been a thing with all three celebrity books this year. Like Berserker, you have to read in Keanu's voice. Yes. Like it does not have any option. And and Mom looks like and reads like Amelia Clark in her non Game of Thrones roles mm -hmm. uh, in her like everyday life and other roles. And so I was expecting that this would probably be in in John's like voice and I was right. not disappointed. I was like, oh this is <laughs> no. John Legazamo just reading me a, like telling me a story right now. Yeah. I definitely feels like they're they just asked him to like his portion of the writing was coming in and acting out these scenes. <laughs> And they're like, okay, just write down everything he says right. what and I, put it in this book. Whatever he says, that's what we're going with because yes. it, it it's it's perfect. And they probably just like, he was like, I want to do this. And they were like, okay, so the story would go like this and this. And John's like, and then I said this. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, yes, and then you said that. That's perfect. Let's put it down. Um, but it's, it's great. We do get, it's, you know, that classic superhero story that we're starting to see a lot of in the modern times of mm -hmm. like, you know, the task force X kind of thing, which yes. I love that it's Phenom X because it is, Very it is suicide, suicide squad, squad yes. uh, in, in kind of the iteration of it that he's like, oh, you're in prison. The only way to get out is to do what we tell you. You have an Amanda Waller type character, mm -hmm. um, who comes in and is like, well, if you join my little group. That's the only way you're getting out of prison. Yeah, to see your son. Yeah, right. Yeah. Very much a Suicide Squad concept. Yes. And, <laughs> yes. uh, and it works. And it's funny because when when they announced John's, I was like, this is going to be the most image book of image since Spawn. Because he is such good friends with like Todd McFarlane and he's been mm -hmm. in Spawn. And I was like, he is going to write such an imagey feeling book like it's gonna be like oh I sat down with Todd McFarlane and I was like I want to do this and Todd was like here's how you do that right and I feel like I was not 
disappointed because that was exactly what happened. <laughs> like, this is a very image-feeling book of, like, the 90s, like, when John mm-hmm. Leguizamo was a part of image, like, movies and things like that. Like, it feels like he went to Todd McFarlane and was like, how do I do what you did? Yeah, yeah. So what, com- yeah, what comics can I borrow from yeah. to make this fit my story? Uh, it was t- the only thing that's tough for me is this guy does not look like John Leguizamo. He looks like a version, like an alternate dimension version. The face does. The I, I feel, especially if you look on the cover, like I definitely feel like that has a, a John Leguizamo, like younger John Leguizamo kind of role. Like now, more chiseled. I John mean, Leguizamo. whoa! Do you remember Tybalt? Like he was super chiseled when he was. I don't know about he was, that. He was. That, that was, was great. That was Baz Luhrmann lighting that helped him get away with. Okay, well, with that, that, that was some great Baz Luhrmann lighting because he looked great in that film. Like he definitely looked like he could be this guy, if that was the case. Uh, and I honestly kept waiting for a Romeo and Juliet reference. Like I feel like if I don't get a reference to every single John Leguizamo movie at some point in this book, <laughs> I'm gonna be disappointed. Like where's my Chu Wang Fu reference? Like. I need them all. Yeah. And I feel like we might get them because I feel like he's going to throw some jokes in there. Um, it is but, possible. Yeah. It is definitely possible. This, because it's definitely, like, there's moments where I'm reading this book and I'm like, oh my God, this is really bad action dialogue. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm watching a Fast and Furious yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, does, it gets a little ridiculous. I was like, okay. It does, but... Um, I like that they did keep the message like front and center at all times and it is a yes. great like fun superhero story and I, I think that um, I, I can't wait to read where else he goes with this like I think it's going to be interesting to see and I'm intrigued by the bad guy so yeah I was going to show the bad guy I'm definitely the like I, looks cool. yeah the bad guy looks super cool and mm-hmm. I can't wait to see what they do with it and um, he's got a very large team helping him with this book Yes. Uh, and you're getting an oversized issue. So I love that too, that we're getting, we're seeing these oversized issues come out. Um, I think all of the uh, celebrity creators that put books out this year did oversized issues, at least for their first one. Right. And I, I, I think that's cool. I think that they're putting a lot into it. And I love to see their enthusiasm for their projects um, and how they translate that to something that you want to pick up. I just want to know when we're going to get the Phenom X Berserker crossover. Uh, I mean, that's two different publishers, but we could get a Phenom X Mom crossover, which would be cool. <laughs> right, let's talk about, like, we're going to have two, like, minority voices, like, get in there, like, females in the Latinx, and we're going to get them to, like, just take down the patriarchy, yeah. like, together, and that would be awesome. I'm here for that. Yeah, um, I'd definitely be down. More... Yeah. More cinematic universes. Yeah. Let's do that. You know? Um, we got issue two of five of Out from AWA Upshot this week. This is um, a Nazi Germany story about vampires, demons of some sort. Yes. Uh, yes. We don't know, All of the above. I guess, what kind of demon it is. It's very... It's very vampiric, but it could be something else. Um, But we've got a group of ally forces who have been captured and taken to a off-the-books camp. And they are being... they're, They're trying to tunnel their way out. And in the process of trying to tunnel their way out, um, one of them is taken by the Nazi soldiers and... You know, I don't really know if he was eaten or not eaten or vamp. I do know that his ability to speak languages is saving saving him all over the place. But this monster, um, this monster story is definitely that, and it is a continuation of that obviously conversation all the time of that the Nazis were monsters. We see that in a lot of books. Right. We see that in a lot of literature um, of different kinds, and I think we're seeing that again of like the monster like is the man is the monster like you know working with all that but uh this i like the gray tone palette because it makes the red of the blood that's associated with this demon and this creature like really pop yeah i'm 
I was I'm a big fan of the art in this one. I haven't read this issue yet. I did read the first one. Mm -hmm. Very much like you, I'm like, okay, we don't know the specifics. Mm -hmm. But we do know that it's some creature in Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I kind of, uh, I don't want to say fascinated by uh, the Nazi ass. Like, I've always liked some of the sci-fi yeah. stuff that was surrounded by the Nazis and how, you know, people said that they were trying to figure out if aliens existed. Like, there was all these crazy stories that come out about uh, what Hitler was doing from, like, a, sci like a scientific perspective. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like the combination of, yeah, you know, like, it's just pure evil. Yeah. Because even vampires you look at as just pure evil. And I like where this could potentially go. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see where it goes. Because it is supposed to be, the name is supposed to be a double entendre. Right. And so, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to see how that plays into it because we haven't really seen that at all yet. So I'm, I'm curious to see where the turn in the story is going to be. This one didn't really provide us too much more um, with what the, like, demon is, like or vampire is. It didn't really provide us more of the, the soldiers themselves. It gave us a little bit here and there about different soldiers. But really what we learned was that... Uh, as we know that you, the Nazis couldn't even trust each other, and we oh, do definitely. see that uh, in this in this issue, and so we're starting to see like, okay, who's the like? We know who the we know the mon the man that's the monster now. We know where he's right. going from, and so like, where is this story going to go, and how is it going to play out? I think though, based on what I read in that first issue and kind of what I'm seeing in the second issue, I feel like it's going to put this nicely into five issues. Yes and not have any issues with, with wrapping it up or having to rush. So I, agree. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun one. I agree. Um, speaking of things wrapping up, we've had a, a couple books in this week, and one of them is Maneaters the Cursed ended this week. I will never be okay with Maneaters ending every time. The thing on the back of the book is actually an in memoriam of uh, people who were burned at the stake or hanged as witches throughout time. Oh, okay. It's, it's beautiful. Um, and I absolutely love man eaters if you never read the original man eaters it's all about um when women get their periods they turn into giant wear cats and they uh eat men and such a brilliant comic it's book idea such a great idea and of course like the government is trying to stop it so they change the water supplies they do all these things and uh man eaters starts with a young girl who gets her period for the first time and uh, you're not supposed to be able to do that anymore. The government has has blocked it. And so her, it's her story over the course of three volumes. And um, this is actually the same girl from the original Maneaters at a summer camp called Craft Camp, which we learn very quickly is not Arts and Crafts Camp, it's Witchcraft Camp. And I love, 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 love this story. I honestly, this is the perfect Edition, Chelsea Kane and team uh, constantly amaze with their use of the, the medium, as you can see, like this school papers right here. Mm -hmm. um, and we see two kids who are at craft camp. One is Bert, who wanted to go to football camp and ended up at craft camp. And the other is Maude, who is the uh, main character from the Man Eater series and is the quintessential craft camp student always wins camper of the year as well as almost every other award at craft camp and they both wake up in issue one to find themselves on like day two of camp everybody else has disappeared and Maude has to help figure out like how to get them back and we learn all the witchcraft cra like crafts that they do all the fun stuff like issue three of this series was just the handbook which was fantastic uh represent like all the like witchcraft like magazine and all the stuff mm -hmm. um but we we go on this adventure with them and it wraps up in this beautiful story this is actually a diagram of how menstruation trees are uh grown by period blood so <laughs> uh i love this series so much if i didn't say that enough um, I absolutely love it. Chelsea Kane is going to continue to push the boundaries of things that make you uncomfortable um, by talking about periods in comic books. And I wish that she would just make a comic called Maneaters, period. 
And that would be great. just go for it, full on. Uh, like I, because it's great. I think that's the bathroom sign that says, yeah. "Please do throw feminine hygiene products down the toilet." Because if you have ever been in a woman's bathroom, you know that it normally says, "Do not flush." feminine hygiene products down the toilet this is it's good for the trees if you do in this world please don't actually do that in real life it's bad for the plumbing system um it's moments like this now i've said before i've read most of the original man eater series but it's when i read books like this and I've, i'm currently reading all of sex criminals nice where this is why i say to people that we are in the golden age of indie comics because you literally can write a book with the weirdest plots mm -hmm. ever and they're like yeah fuck it that sounds great right put it out yeah do whatever you i want. mean it's it sounds like it could really be a great idea and i remember when man eater started coming out a lot of people were really into it it was true it's true uh we were at a convention and i we ran into a guy from another comic book store and uh, he had man eaters like on his in cap like display, and I was like, "Wow, you have man eaters on there!" Because I didn't expect it, because he's like an older white man, mm -hmm. and he goes, "Oh man, I can't keep this book on the shelves in my store." I was like, absolutely I love it," and I told everybody I loved it, and then they've been picking it up and they've been reading it, and I was like, "I love to hear that," because usually older people in general are like, "Don't talk about your period," yeah. but then like older white men are like, "Don't talk about the patriarchy," <laughs> like <laughs> and your period, and so I was like, "Wow, I can't believe this is like we're actually doing this. This is exciting," and uh, I was. I was thrilled to hear that there were so many people out there because when it first came out, one of the things Chelsea Kane said at the back of issue one is, even if nobody ever buys this book, I am putting out all 12 issues. She was like, it is nice. an image title. I am paying for it myself. Yeah. So even if nobody ever purchases a single copy of Maneaters, I'm going to put out the whole book. I'm going to pay for it myself as is required of an image person and I'm yeah, going to yeah. put it out and I thought it was such a great thing that she was <coughs> that like sure of this book and then she didn't need to be in the end because everybody loved it and as they should and this sequel series was wonderful uh the cursed many dish the curse is definitely a pick it up um and I guarantee whatever the trade looks like it's going to be something you want to pick up because the trades always look cool yeah the trades in that first series look great so. yeah um, speaking of golden age of indie comics. <laughs> Your favorite. Canto. I didn't put it in the picks of the week because there are a lot of picks of the week that have not actually gotten the chance to, like, really feel the love that Canto yeah. gets all the time. But, uh, we all know that I love Canto more than most things in the world. This is Canto, the third, uh, story. It's, uh, and it is Canto Lionhearted, which is what it means, and it's uh, the volume, f or issue four. And if you don't know, the Canto books are based off of, like, the characters from The Wizard of Oz. So we had If I Only Had a Brain, and then we had the volume about having a heart. Right. And now we're in the Lionhearted um, volume. So I imagine volume four of Canto is going to be called There's No Place Like Home. Which would be great. And I would 100, or like something like that, like the journey home or something. I think there's actually one already called No Place. Anyway, but it, it just needs to, this is such an amazing series. If you don't know about Canto, uh, you've never seen one of our live videos. <laughs> uh, if you, but Canto is the story of these little knights who... Um, we're happily living, enjoying their own existence, and an evil sorcerer comes along and decides to enslave them by stealing all of their hearts and replacing them with clocks. And they must work for him until the clock clocks run out. None of them have names. They don't, uh have any existence outside of the slave work that they do and one day one of them decides to give another one a name and that becomes Kanto and then they um that's the ice maker that scared the crap out of me um they go on uh Kanto goes on this journey and realizes like I have a name it's my responsibility to win back the hearts of my people I'm going to go on this adventure I'm going to stop the slave um, this sorcerer who's enslaved us and I'm going to save all of my friends and we are now three volumes into this epically beautiful story this is a this is a modern fairy tale in the truest sense um, the creators of Canto are um, they are David Boer and Drew Zucker are David Boer said that 
a huge thing for him was the Wizard was the Wizard of Oz, right. um, and how L. Frank Baum was like, you know, fairy tales were all dark, and there was no positivity, there was no hope, there was nothing good in a fairy tale except stay out of the woods or you die. And L. Frank Baum's whole thing was like, no, you can go to these magical worlds, and things can be dark, but you can still hold on to your hope, and that's actually the strength of the story. And so for them, it was like, how do we do that now? Where is the story of, like, yes, the world gets dark, but if you hold on to hope, you can overcome all that darkness. And Kanto is that character. Um, for Lord of the Rings fans, I always say it's like, what if you gave Samwise, Jam- Samwise Gamgee, like, the lead role in Lord mm. of the Rings? Okay. Because this is somebody who is passionately <laughs> a friend and is just always going to make the choice to, like, protect his friends and love. And um, it's such a beautiful story. If you haven't read it, grab trade number one I actually started in volume two and thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever read and then went back to volume one and I was like whoa it's even better now <laughs> who knew um, but I recommend it um, and if you need a, long, a longer review check out our TikTok and see um, our Bat City Kid reviewer Ben who did a full review of uh, tic- of Canto on TikTok and why you should be reading it I get bone vibes Mm-hmm. Very bone esque, kind of an adorable character in the lead role. Uh, I definitely want this. Is at some point is a book that I will, I will I will get to reading. I want to read it once it hits. I, maybe once it's done. Yeah. Because I feel like sometimes when you have those like epic heroes journeys, you kind of want to. You don't want to end up hitting a point where you're like, oh, I have to wait. I need to know where this goes kind of thing. It's terrible to wait because yeah. they because it is that epic hero journey, so it's mm-hmm. always on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Every issue <laughs> yeah. leaves you on a cliffhanger that you're like, no, what are you doing? Right. So uh, I get it if you want to wait. Um, we do have volume one and two in stock, though, so if you're a trade waiter, they are actually in existence already for volumes one and two, so I recommend grabbing those um, and checking it out. Speaking of things that have been epic adventures, that a character who should have had them all along and hasn't really is Wonder Woman. Uh, this is 781. Yes. Still Becky Cloonan and Michael Conrad uh, writing the story. And we this takes place with the whole immortal Wonder Woman. Immor- Wonder Woman passed away. She ended up in the afterworld. And, you know... Where where does she go? Does she go to the, you know, Elysium Fields? Does she go to uh, Valhalla? Does she go to just the regular, like, not non-existent afterlife? Answer is she went to all of them. Mm-hmm. And we've gone through that whole first arc where she had to go through all of those different things and work her way back and find her way back to the Greek gods to put everything back together. Um, she was fighting Giannis, who is, you know, the gatekeeper for uh, Greek and Roman mythology and has finally put that back together. And now she's back on Earth and she has to deal with the normal problems of, like, you know, she hasn't spoken to Steve Trevor since she's come back and, and every everything's, like... Like, she's hanging out with Etta Candy and Etta's like, well, I have to go to work because, like, Steve's <laughs> waiting on me and, and Diana's like, oh, don't tell him that we got together because, like, uh, I don't know if I'm ready to let Steve know I'm alive. And yeah. she's like, well, he knows you're alive. He just... She's like, well, I don't want him to think I'm ignoring him because I really just... I'm not ready to talk to Steve. And I'm like, keep that going. We don't need to talk to Steve. We're fine. We've moved on. Yeah, but it seems like that means that at some point it'll probably... They're definitely going to cross paths again. And uh, and Michael Conrad <laughs> has, like, a, a plan for Steve Trevor. He's he's talked about it a couple times on Twitter. He has a really good plan for what he wants to do with Steve Trevor. And um, I like that Steve's actually, like, dating somebody else. He's, like... He's moved on, but he also made this beautiful video about, like, the life of Wonder Woman and how we don't know, like, how much she did for the world. Right. And, you know, and we find out in this that uh, Dr. Psycho is actually um, the next villain she's going to be working with. Awesome. Which was hinted at, and there was a little, like, one issue of her time in Valhalla was dedicated to Dr. Psycho being the problem. And so now she's back in the real world, and Dr. Psycho is still being the complete douche that he is. So we're going to get a good Wonder Woman, Dr. Psycho uh, arc. We also, um, for those of you who were like, I'm only reading this for Dead Man, keep reading. Uh, Wait, what? 
the whole previous arc had Dead Man in it, and if you were reading it, you know that you might not, you might have thought that you didn't have Dead Man in it anymore. But I'm telling you, keep going. He's not. He's he might not be gone. I am always a fan when they bring Dead Man into things. Uh, he fits as just kind of a great supporting character in DC. Like it's tough to really feel like he's had a solid series in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like when they attach him to stuff. I've read a lot of those Batman issues where they have their detective adventures together. And Odyssey works perfectly in this. And, you know, we talk a lot about Moon Knight and how in the new Moon Knight series they're really discussing, like, the PTSD he has of all the different things that have come from his experience. And they are having a conversation in this as well about, like, you know, Wonder Woman died. And she doesn't want to deal with any of that. She just wants to kind of go back to it. And in this issue, they're already starting the conversation of, like, Diana, you went through a lot. Like, it's okay to not want to deal with things emotionally. Mm -hmm. But also, like, you do need to admit to yourself that, like, there is an emotional block there. And so we do do see that. Um, And then the backup stories. In the previous arc, we had a backup story that was actually written by Jordi Belair, which was always all about young Diana, which there is a... um, a, a great, I believe it's getting compiled into a graphic novel uh, coming from Jordi Belair about that series. But now we have uh, Vita Ayala is doing a story that leads us to the road to the trial. It's the road to the trial of the Amazons. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're starting to see um, a little bit about, we get a new character um, who, and we see, we see, See actually the induction process to becoming a part of you know the branch of the Amazons that Artemis is in, right. which is more of the warriors who like choose it and want that. We see that induction process uh, with that, and it's it's really cool how they do it and just like the strength of like the women and everything. We actually get to see that in there, so I'm really in for this trial of the Amazons. I can't wait. Uh, it needs to happen already, and all of those beautiful Amazon. We are getting a lot of Amazonian stories coming up soon, and I need them all. It's nice that they are finally kind of building out the Wonder Woman world Mm -hmm. a bit and giving it more more attention. Because I, you know, I've always said that I feel like she's never really had her, you know... Only took 80 years. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well, and I'm glad it's Becky doing it, too. Yes. Becky Becky. and Vita Ayala, like, both Mm -hmm. working on... And I, I believe we're getting a... Is it Kelly Sue DeConnick that's doing the other the history of the Amazons, I think? I think so, yeah. That is a powerhouse group of women who are overseeing this uh, Amazon expansion. And, and, and of course, Joelle Jones on, on uh, yes. Wonder Girl. So you cannot get any better of a team to be the women in charge of bringing us this Am- Amazonian world. The only thing I would ask for, get Erica Henderson to do art on one Something. even a mini series i think she would do great with the mascara like give her uh that part of the wonder woman side of yeah. it and the mascara do all that i think that'd be great and i want more <coughs> uh, marguerite savage in yes. the in the Wonder Woman world because it you in get comics, I want this in general right. yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> just give her something as anything. much as she wants to do right. I'll take it all yeah uh, last <laughs> for hot new titles there's this little book called Venom that came out this week also an oversized issue yes a new number one mm-hmm. um this is a continuation yes from the uh, epic Donny Cates run look I'm wearing a Venom T-shirt six months ago did not care for Venom. After the the sequel came out, after the second movie came out, I was like, you know what? Everyone's been talking about how great Donny Cates' run is. I'm going to give it a try. I hear he's an okay writer. (laughs) And I was like, whoa, I love this universe. Yeah. Like, the whole, all that King and Black stuff, I felt like I was listening to Viking Metal Mm -hmm in my head while while reading this series so it was donnie when he wrote it probably so and i hope so um because it it just it was it was so epic it was cool how he kind of broadened the Mm -hmm. venom universe a little bit uh so this is al ewing and ram v doing uh writing duties together and i kind of like that the way that they've split this up because you get i kind of want to not have an ad here we go so you have two separate stories going on at the same time um i think it's ram v's doing the dylan Mm -hmm. brock stuff Mm -hmm. uh which is eddie's son and then um the uh eddie brock stuff is in space and and that's al ewing 
So you kind of get these two stories running alongside each other, and I really like it. Yeah. I'm really into this. It. I was surprised. I'm mm-hmm. not, and not because it's Al Ewing and Ram V, so I wasn't surprised, but... Ram V doing Dylan is perfect because Ram is so good yes. at this like emotional journey mm-hmm. and this coming of age story. Like that is a big thing for the way Ram Ram tells a story is even no matter how old you are, you're still coming into that age. You've never been that age before. And Ram gets that in everything that he writes. And so him doing Dylan and Dylan is there's so much that is on Dylan's plate being, yes. you know, the son of Eddie and everything that happened and um, in the King in in the King and Black Run and all of that it's 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 such a lot for him and he is he is on his own we see this in this issue like Dylan's kind of on his own well somewhat. he has the greatest sidekick ever he has the greatest sidekick which is ever. sleeper in the form of a cat yeah <laughs> which is just so great when I saw that I was like okay I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. You have a cat that looks like Umbreon, the Pokemon. Yes. And yes. Uh, yeah, that's what else do you need in life? Like I'm like I want a I want an Umbreon like cat sidekick. Like this book is great. And but it's it's so good and Al Ewing is a master class in in cosmic writing. Mm-hmm. And so giving Al the space side of it and having these two kind of come together with, like, Ram being so good at grounding. Like, I mean, Ram V's grounded Swamp Thing to where it's almost not yeah. mythical feeling at all. And uh, and and then Al is all is great at these great over-the-top space odysseys. And then you just shove the two together, and somehow it works perfectly. And I didn't expect it to work that smoothly. I was like, oh, they'll probably have to do, like, one person does one issue and the next does the next because otherwise it won't really work. And in this issue, they were like, watch us. Like, yeah. hold our beers. We're about yeah. to make this whole thing work. And uh, shocking how well it did work. I'll say this. This next page is, like, this part right here, kind of the mm. beginning of the villain reveal mm-hmm. uh this whole page right here like this little section and with the the dialogue like i felt like they're just picking up right where donnie left off and that was a big thing because you know on the t- on the twitter verse where people are constantly flooding donnie with things one of the things that people were constantly like oh i don't know like i know al ewing and ram v are great but like they're not going to take on venom like are they going to rewrite it like are they going to just forget everything you did and donnie right. kept saying just wait just trust them like guys i've read it it's amazing just wait just yeah. wait just wait and for everybody who didn't wait, I feel bad for you that you didn't just trust Donnie and Al and Ram because this literally picks up right where Donnie left off. Yes. Like, this is not a let's forget. Because a lot of times that does happen. It's a new number one. Like, just throw the old story out the window and we'll suddenly somehow circle back to make you think it was connected because of continuity issues. Right. But, like, no, they're like, no, this is a sequel to what happened in Donnie's series. Like, if you were reading Donnie, you're still there. You're still on it. Well, it's kind of hard to ignore. Uh, it is kind of hard to ignore. Uh, sorry, I don't I don't know how much I wanted to spoil uh, with this. But, yeah, it's you can't really just ignore what Donnie did. No. And I appreciate that not only are they, they telling, they're continuing on with it, but I'm excited to see where mm-hmm. it goes. And again, like I hear that metal music playing, like that one panel where it's like saying oh, your time's running out, hug your loved ones. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be so amazing. It's going to be good. I cannot wait. I- I'm fully on board. Like I'm 100% a Venom fan now, which <laughs> <laughs> was not the case six months ago. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I literally right. bought a Show shirt. Show the shirt. Show the yes. shirt. Target, twelve ninety nine. Um, Yeah. I saw it and I was like. I'm full blown. I'm, I'm a Venom fan. Venom fan but now. I will say this: I am a Dylan Brock. Yes. I am more a fan of Dylan than I am Eddie, and I think that's the biggest appeal about Venom now is kind oh, of man. yeah. Yeah, and there there's so much personal connection and everything that goes into that Dylan Brock story that yes. it's just beautiful. Um, cool. Those are our new titles this week. We've got our picks of the week coming up for you in just a second. But before we do that, we want to give you a prize. <laughs> 
surprise! That was really weird to do with my left hand. Oh my god. <laughs> That was supposed to end on that, like, this side, but, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's just do this, since we're talking oh, about man. Venom. Uh, this is the Marvel Tells, essentially, Null. So this is essentially your compendium of everything you need to know for Null, uh, which you need to know to read Venom. Um, and I'm not really going to make it easy, but I'm kind of going to make it easy. Uh, this week, what indie spinoff series was actually actually reported to be the most reordered comic of last week. So what indie spin-off series was reported to be the most reordered comic of last week? This is not as hard as you would think it is. <laughs> I'm seeing this in Yuck Lee cover. I kind of just want this. <laughs> I have more. Okay. <laughs> That's super cool. And Noel's a great villain. Noel was a fantastic villain. Do we have an answer? Is that is that why you're giving me a thumbs up? I didn't get Yes, Scott. It was House of Slaughter. Scott, you were taking home this Noel prize. I was wrong. That's why I was like, it was really an easier question than it should be. Don't make it hard. Yes, House of Slaughter was actually the number one reordered comic last week. Um in, in the world. So uh, congrats to Chris Sheehan and the House of Slaughter team and of course James Tynan and uh, Werther Deladera for that beautiful amazing thing that continues to go. Um, picks of the week. Oh my god I don't know where to start because I love them all. Uh, where do you want to start? Let's start with this one because you don't know this one and then we'll go into the ones okay. we both know. Okay. Uh, Mambo ended this week. Sad face uh, tears. Oh, this crying. Is this is the end of Mambo. Oh. Um, I am very sad about that. This is my favorite Miyazaki film that wasn't made by <laughs> Miyazaki. Um, and I really want there to be a Miyazaki film of this, but this is all about a young girl whose grandmother is the witch of the village. Grandmother dies, and now that means by lineage purposes, she is now the witch of the village, but she has no desire to be the witch of the village. And she's trying to leave, but she can't because the grandmother has cast a curse that won't let her out of the town. And another young girl comes to her and is in need of help because her mother is in danger. And the two end up on the quest together to stop the curse the grandma has put on the village and her. And I literally there is no way to describe this other than that it is a Miyazaki film yeah if you enjoy any of the like spirited way Kiki's delivery service like anything ever what'd you say <laughs> Princess Mononoke if you just if you enjoy any of those you will 100% fall in love with this story um I absolutely love it. It's a boombox story. We have most of the issues. I don't know if we actually have all of them, but I know that that means that with this ending, it's going to be a trade soon. And yes. if you're like Phil, you're probably picking up that trade when it comes in because <laughs> it is going to 100% be worth it. This book has been one of my favorites. It's it's one of those. Every issue is a little bit thicker than the average comic book. Yeah. Um, and it is it's because it is an indie book. It's not like it's not thick because there's a lot of ads. There's actually no ads in most indie books until you get to the end. And um, this has been one of my favorite boom box books ever. And I cannot wait for the trade to come out so that everybody will pick it up and fall in love with these characters. And if this is the end for these characters, I understand. But I'm not happy about it. I want my animated movie, and I want it right now. <laughs> um, now, with this, did they leave it open for a possibility for more? Mm hmm Okay. So it could just be one of those things where it comes back with a new number one. I hope so. And they just do a bunch of different arcs. Right. Okay. You can just keep giving me stuff in this world forever. Um, I talk about the, the book that came out that was called, oh my god, I can't remember... Um, the one I told you I wanted you to read about the, the, the Selkies, the one about the sea. And I cannot remember what it was called right now because I'm a horrible person. But this has that <laughs> same feel of these two people who kind of meet. And it's really just their story of getting to, like, working together and their relationship growing. And then it kind of just ending at the same time and um, leaving it open for more to happen. And I just I need it I need yeah. more I'm very sad that it was only five issues uh, it broke my heart a little bit to get to the end and knowing that we were coming to the end uh, but it's it's a great one of those um, 
And Matt always says that the reason that he is, like, angry with Star Wars recently is because it used to be that <laughs> Star Wars was about, like, anybody could have, like, tap into the, sto- the Force and you could all, you know, you could learn it and you could grow. This brings that whole concept back in. It's mm. like, you know, magic isn't for one certain person. Magic is for anybody and you can you can learn it and you can grow in it and it can be something that shapes who you are and your relationships to other people and I love that that like any there is no such thing as a chosen one like anybody who chooses to step up can be that person and I I love that this kind of gives you that same feeling of hope in that Uh, which is a great thing for boombox if you're going to give teenagers any kind of message the message that they can be the one who changes the world is always the most important message and also that love is beautiful. Uh, I'm very excited for the trade for this one. I can't wait for you to read it. Because I've been patiently waiting. I know, and I'm a patient. I am not patiently <laughs> waiting for you to read it. So I, I mean, I could just sit down and read the single issues, but and I and then buy the trade. I'm very hope because um, it's Boom did Wind, right? Mm-hmm. I'm spacing completely on that. They, they did the nice hardcover yes. for Wind, so I kind of want something like that. Oh my God, Ross! If you're watching, which I know you never, you've never seen this, and that's totally okay I'll because you're a very you busy Instagram man. Later. But yeah, we will definitely both message you. I'm gonna message you on all forms of social media to let you know that a a hardcover of Mamo would yes, be beautiful. Please. and and we're here for it, and we'll buy it if you make it. Um, all right, May's book, Jeff Lemire, yes, number three of. At some point, it'll end. It will, well, it always does. Oh, well, yes, I know. <laughs> this is Dark Horse, yes. Is it? Oh yeah, my yeah. God, it's I a know. Dark Horse book. Which is shocking. It doesn't really fit the Dark Horse mold right now. It but. doesn't. It's definitely the black sheep of the Dark Horse family. Um, but it's just. Would you say it's the Dark Horse? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is the Dark Horse of the Dark Horse family. <laughs> I can't believe I just left that one out there like that. <laughs> um, but I appreciate the save there. Um, I, I had to, I had your back. Don't worry. I mean, this is Jeff Lemire, so obviously if you're Dark Horse, you're like, yeah, just do whatever you want to do. Um, it's him uh, both writing and drawing. And uh, this is the story of a man who lost his daughter um, 10 years ago due to an illness, which I don't think they've established. I don't think they said what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, he is a building inspector for the city. Um, and he recently gets a phone call from his daughter. Who has been dead, like we said, for 10 years. Yes. And so now he is kind of set out on this adventure of finding her because he believes that she is still alive and that she has hidden the whereabouts her whereabouts in a maze. Yes. Which, which is the city. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, this book is so good. Yes. It's, just, it's it, such an emotional journey. And this you, scene? Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. This Ugh. scene. Because like, you know, right off in the beginning of the issue, he's like, oh, I know where to go. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, nope, you're no, wrong. No, you don't. You're completely wrong. And this emotional of him punching the wall and the little bit of blood that you see in there, you're like, oh God, this... And this hits so hard. <laughs> this is a man who, he's he's at the end. Like, you know, he lost his wife. He lost his daughter. And then because of his fixation on not, like, his inability to recover from that, mm-hmm. he lost his wife. And she's moved on. And she's in a new relationship. And he's finally gone back to work. And now he's at this point where he's finally kind of getting better. Yes. And then this happens. And so you don't really, this is once again your reliability of your narrator. Like we don't, is is it, we we believe it's real because he says it's real, but everybody else in the book questions it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like, is it, is it actually, did this actually happen? Is he, is he losing his mind? Is he not losing his mind? Are we losing our minds because we believe him? <laughs> yes. um, and the whole thing he's, is issue one starts with talking about his daughter's sweater and mm-hmm. this thread on it and the thread kind of becomes the thread that he's pulling at yes. as the story unfolds and you see that and it also ends up being the squiggle line from the maze because Jeff Lemire is a beautiful amazing writer slash artist who uses everything that he says and this is one of those strengths of being both the writer and the artist of your book where you can say you know this is what this means both visually and in the actual story right 
And Jeff Lemire definitely takes that to a whole new level when he does both. And it it's so phenomenal how that is the only color in the story. is the red thread of the sweater slash the ink of the maze. Like the daughter always answered, did mazes in a red pen. Yes. And so we're seeing both this thread that he's pulling, but also the ink of the pen becoming the, the fabric of, no pun intended, of what he's doing. And... It's such an emotional fucking journey. Oh, yes. And also, talking about color, this is the first time you're going to be introduced to a new color in this book mm -hmm. as well, as you can tell from the cover and on this page. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do like that. I love that this, the, again, plays with colors in this medium. The other thing that I really like about this issue is is the, the hopefulness with this mm -hmm. character because in the first two issues this is a man who's just going through the routine yeah he's like look I don't really care about any of this this is my only focus and this time you get um, uh, a, a not introduced to a new character but you kind of you finally see the main character talking to someone mm -hmm. and having a conversation who doesn't disparage him yes more. yeah it was like you shouldn't go on this journey like whatever you need to do metaphorically or literally go do it um this is easily one of the most well-written stories uh that is on shelves right now mm -hmm. and of course jeff lemire's just the art like i know that the the way that he's drawing this book i am going to cry i'm gonna cry there's and going to be several moments of crying towards the end i mean of this, this is book. this is one of those issues where you are already there you and can feel it coming yeah you're like, you're oh, like no. oh you're gonna you're gonna rip my heart out and i'm gonna i'm gonna be okay with it like i'm gonna suffer but i'm gonna be happy about it because i'm gonna be better I'm gonna, for it yeah um, absolutely. Like, this is my own personal, like, mental health journey Jeff Lemire is guiding me mm -hmm. through. And it's, like, it, it's such an incredible story. And no matter where it goes, I know that I need it to go there. Like, wherever yes. Jeff Lemire takes me with this story, I'm like, that's probably where I need to go. <laughs> I love this book so much that in there's a moment in this book where he decides to get a tattoo of... The Last Maze. I thought about it. And there was a moment where I was like, I have never felt like there was a good tattoo idea for me. This is it. I want the maze tattooed on my arm. Same spot he has it. Like, It did. It did. So it occurred it, to me too. Yes. I was like, oh man. Yes. Because it's like so <laughs> symbolic of like we're on a journey and like we have to find the path yeah. and the path can be not what we think it is. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh man, that... That is a great, great freaking tattoo idea. Yeah, 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 I considered it. And I already have a pathway tattooed on my body because I have the yellow brick road. And I was still like, I need a maze. <laughs> you can have multiple paths. There are, symbolize that there are many doors that you can open. Jeff Lemire has shown us that in issue three of the maze book. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Uh, you didn't read this one, so we'll go this way again. Uh, which is a mistake, and you'll regret it, and it's fine. Matt told me not to. He said it, it would take me too long. <laughs> he knows I'm a, I mean, I'm a slow reader. It's true. You should read it after the live stream, because yes. you definitely need to read it. Um, this is My Date with Monsters by Paul Tobin, which you may know from Bunny Mask theme. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I was waiting for it. I was waiting. I paused for the, the plot, the applause, because that was definitely going to happen. Um, this is great. So... This has confused a lot of people. A lot of people came to me and they were like, I want to I wanna sign up for that book. It used to be called something else and now it's called something I can't remember. So originally in the solicits, this book was listed as Croak. It is now listed as My Date with Monsters, which is confusing because we've had lots of something with monsters yes. books recently. Uh, but this is My Date with Monsters, which is all about a w world where... A, I'm going to try to explain this in a great way where I don't spoil everything. Um, basically, a woman is trying to... they The government is trying to weaponize dream warfare. And it Sweet. ends up... It ends up backfiring them in their faces and nightmares come out and now the government has to regulate dreams so that we don't release nightmares. And there is one woman and her child who bring these nightmares into the world and she has this 
nightmare eater named Croak that uh, lives with the woman and her daughter to kind of protect them and the rest of the world from the nightmares that physically manifest in our world. And um, much like in, we were talking about with man eaters, there is a drug that the government expects everybody to take that will keep you from having these nightmares. Like you can never have a nightmare again. And if you don't take it, nightmares come out and they become real and uh, shit gets crazy. And it's Paul Tobin, so it is. It's very story heavy. It's very like convoluted at times, yeah. but also overly detailed at other times, and uh, amazing at all of the times. <laughs> uh, I definitely feel like what I've heard about this book so far, and how much I'm loving Bunny Mask. I feel like AfterShock needs to just let Paul Tobin run freely. Yes. At the, just like whatever he pitches to you should be an immediate yes, no questions. I think it is at this point. Yeah, I would assume so. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard great things about this book. I'm surprised this isn't a manga. This is Ooh. very much feels like for those, if, if I had people come in and said, I'm really into manga, but I want to try comics, I would hand them this book. Um, because it does have a lot of this, the, a lot of the characteristics and tropes that manga uses like worked into the story. Awesome. Um, and so I, I can feel like, you know, you do have a lot of the, like, the, the, cl the monsters that come out are reminiscent of a lot of, like, the manga and the Japanese, like, based monster system. Uh, the whole story is actually based in a lot of, like, Japanese lore at different points. Oh, nice. So there is a very strong, um, element. If they would have put this out at a manga, as a manga, I would not have been surprised. Um, but so this is definitely a, a great crossover for people who pick up those horror mangas mm -hmm. and are like, I want to jump into comics. This is a great way to kind of get into the American comic stream from that. Well, that just sold me even more. I know. I was already sold on. <laughs> uh, I was trying to sell you on the books <laughs> that you already wanted. <laughs> yeah. Because I do feel like I was one of those that was like, hey, I think I want this book. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like another book that I also wanted. Right. It um, is not I Walk With Monsters. It is not He Who Walks With Monsters. It is not I any of... I Fight With Monsters. I Fight With Monsters. Or He Who Fights With Monsters. That's what it is. I Walk With Monsters. He Who Fights With Monsters. Now we have Dating Monsters. It's not... None of it, the, the, they're not all connected. It's not one shared universe. I will say I'm slightly bummed this wasn't a, like dating reality book about dating monsters. I do think that that's a missed opportunity. But I also believe that, that humans are often the monsters and monsters are often the men because yes. I'm a huge Frankenstein fan. So, well, you know. Because that is, there is a dating reality element to this book that I'm trying really hard not to spoil. Oh, okay. Please don't. Yeah. So there is, is, is more that goes with that, but... I can't, that is an element of the story that I can't tell you about until you read it. Thank you so much. Um, so once you read it, we'll talk about it. Okay. Calm down. Um, all right, let's do this. Yes. Regarding the matter of Oswald's body, this is a new boom title. Christopher Cantwell. It's a... Done. Sold. It's a, yeah. I mean, I still haven't read Iron Man, but every, everyone has talked about it like mm -hmm. it is the best thing ever. There's another book he's doing right now. Didn't he do the United States of Captain America? Yes, he's doing that one as well. Which is also over. Um, oh, really? <laughs> okay. Uh, so this one is a Boom Studios title. I'm very excited for this because I like all the conspiracy theories around JFK, uh, around Lee, Ar Lee Harvey Oswald. And this is basically one of those, hey, there's a theory going around that it wasn't actually Lee Harvey Oswald who was killed. It was somebody else, and he's actually still roaming the world. And they're like, hey, what if we just go bury, like, let's go dig up his body, and we'll prove it to you. And then all of a sudden, we're flashback into the 1950s. <laughs> or 19, 1950s? 1960s, some of it, but it's fine. <laughs> no, 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 because I think they're... It goes back to the 1960s when they're trying to set it up right before the thing. It, I mean, yes, and then I guess they do go back even further. Okay, but yeah, yeah like, I, I the like 1960s I, is when it happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know it had 63 was 63. when it happened. All, only yeah, because of do. that. Uh, I'll always remember that because of the James Franco TV show. Yes. 11-22-63. It's the only reason I know that date. I actually wrote 
no joke, a 22-page paper about JFK in the fifth grade, and I made it 22 pages long on that on purpose <laughs> for that reason. Um, so I'm that I'm that nerd. Um, and <laughs> th- thanks for the <laughs> delayed reaction. Um, but this this was a one for me. Like I I freaking was ready for this book. I yeah. was excited because I'm like you. I'm like, I want to know, like, let's, let's do these books about, you know, JFK. I actually was kind of almost disappointed a little bit because, uh, D- Department of Truth wasn't actually more about that, which I thought yeah. that that's what it was going to be. Um, Guillermo just said, of course he is still alive. He's running a spoiler alert government agency. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, uh, I was so excited about this, and then the fact that it's basically Ocean's Eleven yeah. about the yes. matter of Oswald's body, I was like, okay, hang on, this isn't where I thought this was going at all. I not I did not all. think it was going to be an Ocean's Eleven conspiracy theory mashup. No, and I, I think that's great that they decided to go that route with mm-hmm. this. Like, hey, we're going to put together a team, and you're going to help us fake the death of Lee Harvey Oswald. We're not really going to tell you, like, they don't tell any of these people what they're getting into mm-hmm. uh, or how they plan on doing it or what their purpose for doing this is. And yeah, they don't know anything. No. But this is, again, it's one of those where I like the characters that they're putting together. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, like, a, a musician who's just starting out who is also really great at um, hot wiring cars. Right. So you you have this kind of ragtag team of, of very interesting characters. Mm-hmm. Um, Yellow Rose oh, I'm, uh, I'm is, a, is a black woman in the South who's mm-hmm. like really good at forging checks and stuff. And so a good handful of badass characters. Mm-hmm. And I like how they're going to tie this to the historical side of it. Yeah, I can't wait to see where this goes because I, I already love all of the characters. Mm-hmm. I'm already want, I'm already like, okay, these are the ones I want spinoffs of. This is <laughs> yeah, like, I need yeah. to know what they were doing before. Or at least like flashback issues. Like I can stretch this out for so long because I could do a flashback issue for all of them. Mm-hmm. And, like individually because I'm curious enough about each person's story like I love that the musician looks like Buddy Holly and it's yes. like and he talks about like Buddy oh I was there like you know and all this stuff like I was supposed to be there or, you know this yeah. and that and I'm like uh, I love I love this and the fact that they like also that we never see the musician play he just keeps talking about yeah, the song he's he, gonna play which <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely yeah. love like it's like is he really a musician or is he just like wanting to be a musician but there's there's so much going on in this and and as an issue one it's so deep to unpack Mm -hmm. and it's a perfect setup issue because every character has something I want to unpack about them the overall conspiracy I want to unpack and just like this is how you set up a story because it's not too much like it's it's not too much exposition, but it's entirely right. exposition all at the same time. They do it well, though, mm-hmm. you know, because it's broken up with um, a little bit of narration, but it's mostly um, dialogue. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's maybe no... No narration. Maybe the first, like, couple pages. Yeah, in the beginning it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after that, there's, it's no narration. But I didn't feel like I was reading a bunch, even yeah. though I was, because I was really intrigued buy this and I was like oh I have to pay attention to every word Mm -hmm. every little detail because it's going to play into this story in some way shape or form Mm -hmm. like these characters have been put together for a specific reason outside of just yeah like they're the thing that they bring to the team right like somewhere George Clooney and Brad Pitt are sitting around talking about why they're picking these people for this team yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm here for it yes yeah and I also want to see that let me see the them sitting around with all the files spread out mm-hmm. on the table and they're smoking and cigars and drinking. And talking about why they're yeah. making these people. Yeah. 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 Uh, next up, this is my, honestly, one of my favorite creative teams of all time, Shannon and Dean Hill, and they are back with a original graphic novel for DC um, about Amethyst. This is the Princess of Gym World. Um, we did an Amethyst book for book club last year. And so I'm really excited that, and and that was one of the things is like, oh, there needs to be more Amethyst. This is actually a kids-based Amethyst book. This is part of that DC Kids line. Um, Shannon and Dean Hale are 
the co-writers of the Squirrel Girl novel series. If you haven't read that, they also, uh, or if you've read that, they also uh, did the Young Diana book for DC. Um, that uh, you can, there was the Free Comic Book Day title if you picked, or, yeah, Free Comic, yes, Free Comic Book Day. If you picked up that uh, comic book, no, Wonder Woman Day. Good Lord, there's been so many back-to-back free comic book days. Uh, the Wonder Woman Day title about the young Diana, the Princess Diana, Diana of the Mascara, um, they did that story, which is also an original graphic novel, but there was a free comic book day title for it. Um, they are fantastic. They are some of my favorite people on the planet and some of my favorite creators. And um, this is perfect. If you don't know anything about Amethyst, it does not matter because this is kind of like a starting point. Right. And it's Amethyst is the princess of Gym World. She's kind of a little brat in her own words. And she ends up, because she's in, she's a troublemaker, her parents send her and the head mage of their, their house, uh, of their kingdom to earth for one week. And it's like kind of like being grounded. Like you're grounded from magic. The only place that doesn't have magic is earth. We're sending you to the earth for one week. And something happens and they never get the call back and they end up stuck there for three years. Okay. And in that three years, her parents go missing, her younger brother goes missing, and all hell has broke you loose in Jim World. And she's the only one that can save it, but nobody knows how to find her. And this is the story of, of you know, her return and figuring out who she is. This is a classic, like, oh, I'm the long-lost princess story. But Shannon Hill um, has built an entire career out of being the long-lost princess. She did the Swan Princess books. Um, she has been doing this for literally decades at this point um as a middle grade and YA writer and she's the absolute best and uh she nailed they nail it her and Dean um they started writing together um they did the Ever After High books which was the fairy yes. tale version of Monster High they did those together and actually started Shannon was dealing, doing them by herself and she was uh she needed a Humpty Dumpty rap like Humpty Dumpty was supposed to be a rapper and she went to Dean and she got him to help her and then it was like from then on they kind of seemed to write everything together okay. um, after Dean helped like laughed at her rapping of Humpty Dumpty from then on they kind of seemed to write all their books together and um, I love that for them um, they have the cutest nerdiest kids and a great amazing life but this is a fantastic book if you are a fan of the She-Ra show that came out recently on Netflix this is this is the same thing 100%. Just, it is, it could live in that same world. I have been extremely impressed with a lot of these kids in YA books. The uh, the Raven one, mm -hmm. there was um, the Swamp Garcia. Thing, uh, the Twin Branches book. Mm -hmm. And then the most recent kids one that I read that I really liked is the Johnny Constantine. Yes. Where it's like Kid Constantine solving like mm -hmm. kid style mysteries. Uh, I've really enjoyed these books. Uh, I love the character of Amethyst. It's all the pinks, I mm -hmm. think is what it is. Right, those um, pinks and purple. Yes. And uh, she's a great character. I love the concept of Gym World. It, you know, kind of makes me think like Steven Universe. Mm -hmm. And just a bunch of wonderful things. And also $10 for these little books, I think is, it's well worth it. And they're 10% off at Bat City because they're trades and so, original graphic novels. There you go, 10% off. Uh, and we have so many of them. There's the Mira, Queen of Atlantis one, yes. uh, which was done by Danielle Page. Uh, there's, like you said, the, the, uh, Maggie C. Vader, uh, Swamp Thing one. There's, uh, what were your, your, what? Just say it. The Mr. Freeze? Oh, yes, the Victor and Nora, the Mr. Oh, Freeze one, gosh. which is Matt's favorite. I totally oh my forgot god, about that, that is one. such a beautiful book. It's the story of, um, Victor and Nora meeting each other prior to like and she knows that she has her disease but of course victor doesn't and it's it's the precursor to mm -hmm. him becoming mr freeze that is one of the most beautiful stories um we also have the catwoman under the moon which yes. is the origin of catwoman um which is told by uh, lauren miracle which is a great story minus the one scene with the cat that caused me to throw my book across the room <laughs> it's fine but so many of these uh the the kid and the dc kids and the the ya books from dc are honestly a must read no matter your age range uh which is why i brought it even though we usually don't talk about the kids books too much on this show mm-hmm Although, honestly, I think we should just be the ones that talk about them because we both love them. But, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I will say this. Outside of Tom King, the kids in YA books is my favorite thing that DC is publishing. 100%. They're way more entertaining. They're a ton of fun. Like, if you like Teen Titans Go, but with more heart and less humor. Right, if you just like the original Teen Titans show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even that. Um, there's, a, there's so many great stories with these YA and kids books. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm a full-grown adult. I will, the time of my life. Right, I will go on a mad, <laughs> angry rant if you tell me that kids in YA books are not for all ages. Uh, please don't make me do that. Just come in and buy them and enjoy them because uh, YA books are, like all books, for everyone, and you should read them. Yeah. Uh, lastly, pick of the week. Um, we've talked about it before, but now we're going to talk about it in detail. Matthew Rosenberg and Tyler Bosses. What's the furthest place from here? Well... A wonderful creative team. Yes. I am happy that these two are actually back together. Yes. They did another really wonderful series, which was that also? That was an image book, wasn't it? Four Kids Walk Into a Bank, Four I think. Into a bank. So, was it? I don't think it was. Was it Dark Horse? Why did I? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't if know. you know, tell us in the comments. But you need to read that one uh, as well. Four Kids Walk Into a Bank is a really great series. And I was very excited that not only are they back together, but they are doing a story surrounding kids. Yes, and they actually started this book four years ago. Yes, and I, I don't did, know I if, if you're on Twitter, you might have seen Matthew Rosenberg saying we're going to talk about that later in in news because there's some big news that came out of Matthew Rosenberg's tweet thread. But one of the things is that they did actually start this four years ago, and uh, he calls it the curse book. What the, what's the furthest place from here? Because there's been so much. BJ, did you get is did you get this issue? Um, if not, let me know. Um, I do have you down for it, <laughs> but we had it from the deluxe. But I think I have you subbed to the whole thing. So. Um, Good Lord. This is a post-apocalyptic book. Um, we are living in the apocalypse world, and we follow a bunch of kids who have holed up in a record store. Yes. Which is a great place to be <clears throat> stuck in an apocalypse. And I also like that each of the kids has to pick out one record that kind of symbolizes... There's this fun little back and forth between two characters over Hall and Hall and Oates. <laughs> and how... The, she picks the record she's like oh these guys look cool and I'm just sitting there thinking I've never in my entire life thought Hall and Oates looks cool but I can believe that Matthew Rosenberg did yes, yes. I 100% believe that yeah. there was a point in his life possibly yesterday where Matthew Rosenberg was arguing with Tyler Boss that Hall and Oates were cool and that's how that came about. Like, I 100% just knowing what I know about Matthew Rosenberg believe that in his heart of hearts that he thinks all the notes are cool. Yes. Um, so this is a book that uh, essentially there's no adults. Mm -mm. Um, and we don't know why. There's no real answers to, to what's coming. Um, Possibly something happens when you get past a certain age. Yes. Possibly. We um, don't know for sure. But yeah, I'm getting very, a uh, little bit of like the Warriors mm -hmm. vibes here, where these, all these kids have kind of separated off into factions, and they were brought to this part of the city or the town. Um, there's so many questions. And so many. I'm, I, I, I will sit around and wait. Because they will answer all of them in yes. the most beautiful way possible. Yes. Um, these are two creators that both tell amazingly beautiful stories. And when they work together, they just kill it. And I absolutely cannot wait for issue two. And this is, this is insanely oversized for yes, issue one. It is a, it's a big issue. And that was very important to them that it was. Um, they talk about that on Twitter. Like, there's... Um, there's that that's a huge thing for them and this story you know we see we start to see all the different groups and what they might mean we see that there's something going on in the world like i said about like when you hit a certain age something may or may not happen to you we're unclear because the way the story plays out it doesn't necessarily show us that yeah. for issue one and um we don't really know how we got here what happened in the world and we don't know anything and i love it i love it so much yeah um yeah i had a ton of fun with this book um the art i mean tyler boss is just next level mm -hmm. 
so fantastic. I mean, obviously, I'm going to sit here and gush about him after a dead dog fight. Oh, like, it, it just... I'm so excited that these two are working together again, and this is such a great story to tell. I'm also excited that there is... I mean, oh, God, look at this two-faced red. Like, there's going to be a lot of really wonderful scenes in this game. Right, anticipate this being in Picks of the Week every time it comes out, because it will probably be in Picks of the Week every time it comes out. Yes. Um, and then there's going to be vinyl, so, uh, you know... Maybe. We're going to talk about that oh, okay. in in the news uh, section of the show later on. Stick around if you want to hear more about Matthew Rosenberg's conversation about uh, vinyl. Yes. Uh, um, but this is definitely the book to check out this week. Absolutely. And it was the, the hot book this week. Um, yes. I had so many people who added it on at the last minute. Um, I am out of cover A. This is a cover A. I think this might actually be your cover, eh? Um, okay. But uh, <laughs> I have to double check that. But we might, act, we are out of cover A, but there's like a Brian Michael Bendis variant. I think that's issue two. No, I what? think it's this one. Go, go no. grab. There's a, it's, it's right there. It's no, not it's, the cover. It's not that cover. It's not Scotty Young. No. So there's a cool Scotty Young cover. Right. I don't. Uh, BJ, I probably should have given you that, but I know we were originally on the. Uh, if you want to switch it out, BJ, you can. Um, if there's one left, because I may take this. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I may take this as well. There's more. There's more. Oh. Uh, just grab the stack. There's oh, I think you're right. I think this is the Bendis yeah, one. Yeah, that's here. the Bendis one, the pig one. Yeah, so this is the Bendis one. Great cover. Uh, with the gang that wears pig masks. Mm -hmm. Like I said, very much the Warriors. Um, yeah, BJ wants uh, mm -hmm. Scotty. Uh, Scotty. I should have. I didn't even think about that, BJ. I'm sorry. Now, That's on me. Honestly, even though I really like the Scotty, I kind of want the Bendis one. Right, the Bendis one's great. And it's been a while since cool. they has, Bendis has done some art. Yeah, and then we have this one as well. I'm, I don't, I'm I don't know who did that on one. one. Oh, Mar Marcus, Marcus Martin, Martin. Yeah. Um, is the one on this one as well. A lot of cool covers. It's a really great story. Um, ooh, that's an interesting question, Gomez. I, have, I actually have an answer for this. So Gomez asked, what's the one record you would choose to save? If you could only choose one record to save. And mine is there was an, a band in the 80s that only put out one album, and they're called Horizontal Brian. They're a British power pop band. They put out one record called Vertical, and it's one of my all-time favorite albums. I found it in a record shop for four ninety-nine. I talked, I took it up to the front counter. I was like, "Dude, I have been looking for this record forever because it's not streaming anywhere. You cannot find this album anywhere." And he was like, "Cool, four ninety-nine." And I was like, "No, dude, you don't understand. Like, let me play. I have this like ripped. Like, someone literally recorded it off the vinyl onto a CD, and it was all scratchy and messy, but." Is fantastic. That would be the one I would save. I actually personally only own three vinyls, and uh, I didn't buy any of them. I own <laughs> the like He Man cartoon soundtrack, oh, which I may or may amazing. not have known donated to the Toy Museum. I'd have to double check. That, if I haven't, I intended Mondo? to. No, I mean I bought it. Like it was my brother's in the eighties. Oh my gosh! And oh my so gosh. I don't remember if I actually gave it to the Texas Toy Museum, but my my plan had been originally to give it to him. I also own uh, the La Bamba soundtrack on vinyl. <laughs> and then uh, one of our amazing uh, customers, Jay, actually bought me the Wizard of Oz uh, okay. soundtrack on vinyl. So I would probably, I don't know if it, I mean, La Bamba or the Wizard of Oz, one of those, I guess. I mean, maybe that He-Man one's probably worth something. Uh, but if I, an album that I don't actually still own on vinyl that I did as a kid that I would, if I could go back in time and save this from like my parents' divorce. Sorry, mom, if you're watching this, I don't know what you did with it. It's not your fault. Uh, things happen. But uh, <laughs> she was watching earlier, so I feel, I feel bad like throwing her under the bus in that situation. But I had a Care Bears vinyl mm. when I was a kid and on it was the Care Bears birthday bop and I don't remember anything else that was on there but I do remember my most profound memory of childhood was that I would put that on 
on, I remember putting it on on my birthday and I threw all of my pop, this is the most 80s thing I will ever say. I put on the Care Bears birthday bop on my record player, threw all of my popples on top of my rainbow bright canopy and then jumped up and like popped the popples off my oh canopy. My is it that one? Uh, yeah, the Care Bears <laughs> birthday party. That was, that was my shit. So... Uh, the one record. The one record that save. I wish I could go back and save was the Care Bears <laughs> birthday party uh, vinyl that I had That's when so I awesome. was less than five years old. Because my parents got divorced when I was five. So less than five years old, I had this. Nobody knows what happened to it. Uh, you know, if you find the Care Bears birthday party, that's my shit. Uh, it's great. I love how many of you are enjoying La Bamba in there. I, dude, I freaking love that. And Scott, the fact that you said Richie in like that crazy thing is just beautiful. BJ said my bangs just became a foot high because of my story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Scott said that's a lot of 80s nostalgia in one sentence. It's true. Uh, if you ever doubt that I was born in the 80s, I have a picture of me sitting in like. Uh, I think it's a Care Bears nightgown in my rainbow bright bed, like hugging like my rainbow my my sprites and my popples, and I'm like three years old, and I'm literally the JC Penney's catalog for the rainbow bright bedspread that was available. Yeah, uh, it's 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 a thing. I I was in fact a child in the '80s. It's hard to believe, I know, but it's true. Um, Math would be nine inch nails, <laughs> smashing pumpkins, smashing pumpkins. Yeah, it would be. Nine Inch Nails. All of, uh, what, the fragile? Downward Spiral? For the <laughs> it would be the fragile. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Would it be the fragile? Or Ghost. Or Ghost. One of those on final. I only yeah. said that because we were talking about Nine Inch Nails earlier. But did I have Wuzzles? I did, Scott. I did have Wuzzles. I was a big fan. Um, and I think Avatar The Last Airbender did a great job bringing Wuzzles back because, let's be honest, that's what those animals in Avatar The Last Airbender were, were just yeah, Wuzzles. pretty much. Uh, yeah. I have a lot of 80s toy <laughs> nostalgia. Anyway, uh, let's give these people something for listening to me talking. Ooh. Prize! BJ asked where the Boglins were when this was happening. They were at Matt Live's house, not mine. <laughs> Uh, what do I want to give you? Sure. We just talked about a lot of indie comics, so let's give away a copy of Skybound X number one. Uh, this is a celebration of the 10 years of Skybound, and uh, that's Rick Grimes with a lightsaber um, on it. And Isn't it called Rick Grimes 3000? Rick Grimes 2000, because apparently we got lightsabers in the year 2000, and I missed out. <laughs> um, Ooh, it's got an ultra mega story in here. Yeah, it did. Uh, each of those Skybound issues actually featured a different story in the universe by the creators that were Skybound stories, mm -hmm. but they're not, like, just reprints of issues. Um, let's see. Let's go with, um, Vault Comics announced the finale of what long-running, uh, 25 issues, which is huge for an indie comic, a uh, series this week. Vault Comics had the end of a series. This the, It is coming up. It did not actually happen. They just announced that they just completed mm. the last issue, issue 25 of what series. If you need to know how to find that, you should be following um, Adrian and Damian Wassel on Twitter, the founders of Vault, the brothers who run it. If you go to either of their Twitters, you'll see uh, Vault Comics announce the finale of this long-running 25-issue series this week. Uh, Scott said, here in the land of was, we're having twice the fun because every living thing is really two in one. Oh, my God. I cannot believe that you just dropped that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, you know what I was a really, really big fan of? I didn't actually have stuffed animals for, but I will. And, and Ram has sat here and watched it with me. So shout out to Ram, who's in the comments right now. But I was a huge fan of gummy bears. Um, and that is, there is actually a TikTok video about how, like, 80s and 90s cartoons didn't need to go so hard on their theme songs, but they did. And, like, the guy is just listening to the Gummy Bears theme song because it's got, like, key changes and, like, mm -hmm. all new melodies and stuff like that. And uh, the Gummy Bears theme song is, is fire. It's beautiful and <laughs> wonderful. So... Uh, look, Scott's gonna, Scott's gonna break out the theme song in the comments, but... Yes, BJ, it is Wasted Space. Wasted Space is one of the first big Vault titles, and it finally came to the end this week, and all of the uh, the staff of Vault has been very emotional about the fact that this is, like, their first big book. Um, uh, I love that Scott is literally just texting in the... Uh, <laughs> 
the theme song to gummy bears right now and i'm trying really hard Where not to gone? like <laughs> not trying really hard not to sing along with scott and <laughs> um <coughs> bj that skybound x is yours enjoy <laughs> oh my gosh all right the the 80s man and early 90s <laughs> great times bless you uh in stock we've got some books so um we've got the carnivore saga uh and there's two books from it uh sunny haze and shamanic ape these are actually done this is a publishing company um called hero the hero project it's the uh ceo of heavy metal doing oh, his nice. own his own uh publishing company so and it's Everybody that's in the publishing company is actually listed. They all work on the books together. This is like their projects, and they're all listed on the cover of every book. So um, it's pretty cool. Uh, Headless from Scout. This is season two. There is a season one um, of this that I haven't ever read before. I, I think this art is really cool. Uh, Phil, you can show it if you want because it's all like in those blues and pinks. So that's, of course, oh, something that we love. Um it, it was an interesting story. It's definitely it's built around um, a murder that takes place in the 1980s in Salem, Massachusetts. This is the fallout of it. Um, I said I have a huge uh, problem with who they made the villain, but I have very personal ties to the Salem Witch Trials. Well, the art looks radical. The art was great. Uh, Still Water number 11 is out. Chip Zdarsky is amazing. There you go. Yeah. That's what you need what to know. What more about do that. you need? Deadpool, Black, White, and Blood issue four is out, and uh, all red. Yeah, there's got to be some good stories in that for sure. I love all these anthologies where you can just kind of jump in at any point and get um, a story from some of your favorite characters. Harley Quinn, the animated series, Eat, Bang, Kill, issue three. If you were a fan of the Harley Quinn animated series, which most of you said you were earlier in the comments, yes. uh, you okay. should be reading this book because it is a direct continuation. It picks up right where the last episode of season three, yes, there was three seasons, season two, two, season two ends. This is essentially your season three. Uh, Eternals, issue seven. This is a new story arc. So if you didn't catch the first part of Kieran Gillen's Eternals, this is a good place to jump in. Um, we do also have the trades for it, so you can start there and then come back. Yes, Gomez, we can add Harley to your box, my dude. Yes. Uh, uh, Justice League, last ride, because all things should be written by Chip Zdarsky. Yes. I'm just, I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, <laughs> magic number eight. Uh, this is Jed McKay writing a magic story. So if you're fans of Magic the Gathering, you should be reading it. Because honestly and truthfully, it is so embedded in Magic the Gathering, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> uh, Mighty Morphin. This is uh, issue 13. It is legacy number it does not 80. Say. doesn't say on there. It's on the other one. Uh, Ram, this is already in your box. I do know that cool for sure. Cover. But yeah, Mighty Morphin. It's is back uh amazing spider-man issue 78 we are going to see uh i believe the way brian lasser described it to me is i would like to buy this issue to see ben riley get his ass beat so okay. if you're a fan of ben riley he's back he's actually about to get a series uh but kelly thompson kelly thompson she's the new spider-man writer huh no it's still rotating oh. uh star wars high republic uh, is issue 13? Is that what that is? 11. 11. Yeah. Nice. Look at that beautiful Peach Momoko cover. Yeah. Oh, my God. Get it for the Peach Momoko. Get it for the Peach Momoko. Action Comics 1036. I love that Superman is just there lifting tanks. He's a badass. Strange Academy issue 13. This has just been an incredible series. We do have, and I never remember to bring them onto the live stream, so I once again did not bring them tonight, but we do have volumes one and two of Strange Academy. If yes. you're like, I really want to get involved with Strange Academy, which the answer is yes, yes you do, because it's phenomenal, uh, you need to jump in, and we have both of those volumes, which will drop you right around this time. Undiscovered Country, Scott Snyder and Charles Sewell. Um, it's it's fantastic because it's Charles Sewell and Scott Snyder, um, yeah. So you you definitely need to get it. Ram, I can get you that HQ book, um, absolutely. And Gomez, I saw that you wanted Action Comics, so we got you. Uh, Hellions is back. This is issue seventeen. This is the action figure figure cover, uh, mm -hmm. showcasing um, Havoc. 
The Thing. This is The Thing in his uh, solo series, the second or no third solo series yeah, for The Thing. The we're gonna right. we're gonna talk about uh, some Thing stuff coming up soon. So pull your Thing trivia out and get ready. Um, Matt Matt enjoyed it. Yes. Really? Yeah, I Matt like the really, cover art. Matt really enjoyed it. He he, that was one of the books he read this week. Um, <laughs> that of all the books that came out this week, you're like, yeah, I should have the thing. <laughs> and if you want to hear Matt's rant on why most people don't remember the Fantastic Four, you can come by the store. Excalibur issue twenty six. Um, Avengers Tech on. This is the uh, Mech Tech Avengers World. That's issue four, I believe. Also, Teach Momoko on every cover yeah. of that. Pennyworth, issue four of seven. I really just, in my brain, this reads like Kingsman. I don't know if it is, but anytime I think of Alfred as the lead character, I just think it um, must be a Kingsman. Have you watched story. the TV show at all? No. It's is, really good. Is it just Kingsman? Pretty much. Okay, that's what I It's actually really good. Like, I'm impressed by how good Pennyworth is. Been. Nice. I handed you a book, and I don't know what it was. Titans, Titans United, United, number three of seven. Yeah. Uh, the Titans are back. Not the Teen Titans, the Titans Titans. Which is a different team. Uh, the Joker number nine punchline still has a story going on in here. If you're not reading it, you should read it. James Tynion writing a, a James Gordon story that's focused on destroying the Joker and a punchline story. Uh, Black Manta issue three. Black Manta is a terrible human being, but we're gonna see maybe some redemption from him. Who knows? Uh, and Batman the Imposter. If you are ready for your Batman movie, this is a great way to figure out how that story might play out because I know this is a. Uh, the writer of the movie writing this book. I didn't know this was a thing. And oh my god, Sorrentino on yeah, art? Yeah, you said that on issue one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> these, all these blend together. It's, it's okay. There's so there's so 17 cool. Batman titles. I don't expect anybody to remember yeah. which one, but that I one's a great one. Though. Yeah, I know. I still need to read it, too. And now we're going to give you a prize! <laughs> Surprise! Gomez, Gomez, we can definitely uh, add Batman Imposter to your box, and uh, we can also send you your box this week, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to give away a copy of the Batman Long Halloween Special. If you did not read this, holy crap, this is a direct sequel to Long Halloween. This is right in the Long Halloween world. It's the same creative team. I need this to be a series Screw you if it's not. I'm going to be pissed off because this is perfect. I need it. I well, need they, it all. They had the sequel to Long Halloween. So well, takes, they do. The sequel, sequel, it's like years later. So after Dark Victory? It's after Dark Victory. Okay. Dark Victory exists. Uh, Catwoman and Rome exists. This is like okay. a, a sequel to all of the Dark, like Long Halloween mm -hmm. franchise. Like... This is this is years later. And is this a one shot? It's supposed to be a one shot. It is not left closed. It is not closed. This is not a just not a one shot. Okay. I, but it is a one shot. I mean, I'm on board. I am too. I'm on board. Um, and the question is, yeah, you know what? We'll just do this. According to most of the internet, what is Batman's IQ? There are actually two possible answers, but I have a specific one in mind. If you can tell me what most of the internet says Batman's IQ is, you can get this copy of the Long Halloween special. It's called a special because it's supposed to be a one-shot. Again, not having it. I'm going to need more. This sets up a perfect new series from uh, Tim and Jeff. So It is not 186, BJ, but you are very close. 212 is a little high. 192, Scott, yes. The internet believes, including BuzzFeed, <laughs> believes oh that, okay. that Batman's IQ is 192. Uh, dude, it's like every Is that high? What's the highest IQ one can Uh, well, I mean, Ram says it's unbelievable. 192 is very high. Oh, okay. uh, what is the highest IQ a person can have? I obviously don't have it, so if you do know what the answer is, let us know. Because I, if I if I had it, I would. I mean, BJ's had 236. Right, so it can obviously get pretty high, I guess. Interesting. I don't know much about... I've never wanted to test my IQ because I don't want to know. I did... 140 is Mensa level, according to Scott. Really? That's all it takes? Oh, shit. What's I'm Minsa really smart. <laughs> <laughs> Mensa is the um, essential, like the Academy of the World's Smartest People, which I didn't know you only needed a 140 to be Mensa level. That's wow, that's, that's good to know. Now I feel like I want to see if I can get cool. that Mensa level. Yeah, maybe you can. Maybe you're like a savant. <laughs> Who knows? I highly doubt it. <laughs> 
Um, well, we're going to talk uh, some trades starting with Shang-Chi because that is now streaming on Disney Plus. So For free? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I know. Not it's beautiful and wonderful, and I love it. Also, you should watch 10 it. bucks. Yeah, speaking of $10, $10 uh, mini trades, is the Marvel vs. Hawkeye. If you need to catch up on your Hawkeye, this is a great time to do it. it what does it have in it? It has Marvel Adventures, The Avengers, Hawkeye from 83, Avengers from the 60s, and Generations Hawkeye and Hawkeye. I was I was checking because I thought maybe there would be some of the uh, the Matt Fraction David We Ott actually stuff. just sold our trade for that. Um, so. I, that was one of those recent books that I finished, yeah. and it's, it's so good. one it's of the so best series good. I've ever read. Guillermo so just said that Shakira is Mensa. I am not surprised. Shakira is... That, Beautiful and a genius. Yeah, and I've actually heard that she's a pretty intelligent human being. She seems like, because she's really good at her business. And yes. also, I, I remember when everybody was like, when she was on the, you know, the Super Bowl, when her mm -hmm. and, and Jayla did the Super Bowl, and everybody was like, oh my God, I can't believe she still looks so good. I was like, you're underestimating the fact that that woman did not have dance tights on. Her legs just magic, like her legs look like that. That's not a dance tight. That is no. just like her perfect body. And... The fact that she's that smart on top of that is just congratulations, Shakira. You are wonderful. She is also on TikTok for anyone who Oh, good to know. Yeah, you can ch watch her do all those trendy dances. She's so cool. Yeah. Oh, know. she is. She yeah. definitely is. Uh, Wasted Space Volume 1, since we were talking about it, if you want to jump into one of Vault's, like, you know, cornerstone books that they launched early on, Vault only launched in 2016. Um, so if you want to kind of jump into where Vault started, this was an early book for them. Jump in. This is great. Is Hayden, Sher is Hayden Sherman the guy that does Chicken Devil? The artist? Yes. Yes. Shoot. Interesting. <laughs> Feels like don't claim <laughs> this book because I just did. <laughs> well, now that I know it's coming to an end and it's like their big title. Right. And it's got Hayden Sherman art. I like his art. The Chicken Devil art is fantastic. It's fantastic. So, yeah, okay. Uh, we talked about Stillwater being new this week. If you want to start in on that, volume one is right here from Chip Sadarsky and Roman Perez. Uh, Doom Patrol, Grant Morrison. If you are enjoying the show, this is the run you need to read. And it is. The show is fantastic. If y'all haven't been watching that show, please watch it. And yes, read this because Grant Morrison, Doom Patrol is... Like iconic radio. Yeah. Uh, since we talked about the new Venom and needing to get caught up, uh, Donny Cates' volume one of his Venom is available as well as the King in Black saga. Um, both are great places to start if you're trying to catch up on what's going on in the new Venom. If you felt lost at all, one of these will help you. Yes. Or both. But I would start at the beginning. You definitely want to get all of it. I even went online and found a reading list that like broke down all the tie-in issues and free comic book day stuff. Um, yeah. And there's some, like, random one-shots, like Venom, Venom, or whatever. Which uh, a lot of that we have in yeah. shop, so if you need it, let us huh? know. Venom. Venom. Yes. Uh, a book that well, I... Well, it's, it's Nam. Yeah, it's like Vietnam. But Venom. Mm-hmm. Venom. 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 Uh, I didn't try. It was, <laughs> it was hard. Uh, a book that we kind of didn't talk about when it came out, but this is uh, in trade form, but this is an Aftershock trade. It's a uh, Scout's Honor, and this is all about, like, we, uh, we, the world went into apocalyptic mode. We went into a bunker, and we had the Boy Scouts manual as our only guidebook for what happened. And, uh, we've got a really cool world that comes out afterwards, and we're following the Boy Scouts handbook. And the only people who can rule in this world are men who have gone through the Boy Scouts handbook. <laughs> And are become Eagle Scouts, except for the character in this book, who turns that a little upside down. Um, things that came out this week, trade-wise, Volume 2 of Homesick Pilots is out. The book for the blues, purples, and pinks, yes. honestly. And yeah. uh, Casper Wingard's art, go ahead, fall in love with it. Yes, it's very easy to do. It's very beautiful oh. and magnificent. It's gorgeous, and Volume 1 was a haunted house story, and Volume 2 is so much more than just a ghost story. So yeah. if you haven't read Homesick Pilots, jump in. We have Volumes 1 and 2 in store. Uh, speaking of ghost stories, Grant Morrison's Proctor Valley Road with Boom is out in trade form now. Yes, this is the full, complete run. 
Um, I know that there was talks that maybe there would be more, but I think it was more of just kind of rumor circulating mm -hmm. Twitter. Uh, this is a really great book. Um, I think it's more so written by Alex Child, and Grant Morrison is just kind of the like navigator. The cohesiveness of the story leads me to believe that Alex Child wrote it and not Grant Morrison. Yes, and that just some of the concepts were... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this doesn't read like a Grant Morrison no. book at all. It's kind of misleading to yeah. see his name on there because you're like, wait, it this doesn't feel like Grant Morrison at all. But I actually really, really enjoyed the series. It was one of my favorites when it was coming out. If you are from any town in Texas at least, and probably the rest of the world, but for sure a town in Texas, you have a story, and, and probably New Mexico for BJ, you have a story of a haunted road and weird things that happen on it, and this is that story. This mm -hmm. is like their haunted road, small town, haunted road, bad things happen in the 70s, and all they want is tickets to see Janis Joplin. Yeah, that's how this all started. That's all how it started, and it, it just spirals <laughs> out from there. Um, Nottingham complete trade as well complete story um this is a robin hood retelling from mad cave and uh it's 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 dark i heard really great things about this i've been waiting to read it yeah um the art was the thing that really stood out to me for this one also the trade's only 14.99 so i feel like that is a is a pretty good deal for what looks like probably five or six it's issues. five issues okay mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've all, I was always seeing the covers to this, and I would skim through the art. And I'm like, oh, I, I do really need to read this book. I was so excited about this book, uh, pre like it arriving, and then issue one was a spec book, and so I never got to read it because all the speculators bought it up, and so I've been waiting to read it. So I'm excited to finally get to jump in and uh, take it from the train. The first few things, uh, uh, the only, uh, this is all it took to sell, sell me is in this twisted medieval noir. That's yeah. it. That's all I need. I'm a big fan of anything in the Robin Hood universe, honestly. Yes. Yeah. Um, speaking of books that I didn't read, but I'm not going to. Oh my gosh. Uh, Red Room. we also Room, can't show. That we also can't show. Red Room uh, trade paperback from Ed Piscor. Yes. Um, great art, but a concept that's way too much for me for sure. Yes, it's kind of a peek at the darkest parts of the internet. Like all the dark web stuff that you know exists, but you never really want to take a dive into. Ed Piscor does that for you, and he does it magnificently. If you don't know who Ed Piscor is, you are missing out on a whole chunk of the comic book world. Um, he does a really great podcast called um, Cartoonist Kayfabe with uh, Jim Rugg, another very talented independent creator ed piscor is somebody who loves comic books i feel like everything that he writes is a love letter to mm -hmm. comics in some way uh he did hip-hop family tree and uh, x-men grand design which was such a wonderful book um and this is really fun if you have the stomach for it i highly recommend uh picking this up and checking it out because yeah. it has been great gomez said it's like watching hostel in book form yes yeah very much so oh that's kind of cool yeah it's like a raised yeah, like, like scratched, scratched. In. yeah that's yeah. super cool yeah yeah it's, yeah it's bigger than a normal trade uh, uh, which wise. you need with ed piscor's art because i mean if you see the hip-hop family tree ones are like they're huge uh and you need that with piscor's art because he is right classic such a, cartoonist yes such a very talented and that's one of the great things about the cartoonist kayfabe like the patreon is he'll He'll show you these wild underground books you've never heard of that he's just like digging through bins and he pulls it out and he'll sh talk about the art style or like what that kind of art style is called and then he'll show you him recreating it. Oh wow. And so if you are a fan of art and comics like I am where it's like the main focal point for why you read comics then Ed Piscor and Cartoonist Kayfabe is like the place that you want to go yeah. for all that stuff. Cool. Those are some of the trades we have in stock. We have a ton more. We also have a lot on our half off trade rack. I didn't bring any of those, but our half off, because Matt had just reorganized it and I felt like an asshole if I took any of them off of it. But <laughs> there is a 
ton. Like, ha Matt had to start a new bro level of trades in the half off trade right now, and they are all fire. Matt just recurated it today to be the best of the best. So, if you're looking to launch into some of your some of the series that are new, some that you've heard about forever, just want to like kind of dive into some great tomics. Matt uh, just curated a great half off trade section today, so come check it out this week. Until then, prize. Oh, really? Surprise! Why well, had to give him the cue? Oh. Um, we're gonna give away this copy of Marvel Tales featuring the Fantastic Four. This is a really cool, like classic Fantastic Four. Uh, so it's retail collection of books. Yeah, it's a collection of a couple issues from the Fantastic Four. I'm going to give that to you if you can tell me there are two major Marvel series that the Thing was once the star of, not counting the Thing himself. Mm. Uh, what were the two Marvel series that the Thing was once a uh, star and or co-star of? Fantastic Four is not the answer. <laughs> Does not count. I'm not accepting Fantastic Four as an answer. There are two other series that are so classic Marvel series. In this one, you have Fantastic Four number four. Fantastic Four Annual 6, and then Fantastic Four 245. And BJ asked how many times does Sue faint in those issues of the Fantastic Four. Well, and, and especially four, in those, er yeah, when Namor comes probably in. probably more than. You forget about it. That dude runs around with his shirt off the entire time, and she cannot control herself <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, that's the only negative thing. I will say that the early Fantastic Four issues are some of my favorite parts of like Marvel history. I love the Fantastic Four because of that early stuff, but good lord. <laughs> I am a huge Inhumans fan, as a lot of you may know, and they of course appeared in the Fantastic Four, and it is very, very hard for me to read the Fantastic Four issues because yeah. it hurts my feelings how weak that uh, uh, the Suit, that suit is. Gomez actually got it. BJ, you were missing one of them. It is the Marvel 2 and 1 yep. and the Strange Tales, which he started with the Fantastic, uh, with the Human Torch. So, Gomez, you are getting this Fantastic Four Marvel tale. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a time when I was very excited because it was Dan Slott. He started doing the Marvel 2 and 1, and that led up into his, his Fantastic Four run, which. Yeah. Is, yeah, I just, I always want the Fantastic Four to have a comic book series. And I feel like that's, it's kind of like how DC won't ever get rid of Detective Comics. I feel like Fantastic Four is one of those that Marvel's going to try to constantly keep throwing something at as much as possible. Yeah, but there have were, been times where they yeah, were gone, but were like, if minute. they can keep it going now that everybody knows that's where they started, I yeah. feel like they're like, oh, we have to keep this. It's just um, that one series that you really have to give like a top writer too. It's true. You know, like after slot, I think is this, the slot runs over, isn't it? No. No, it's still going. Yes. But like after that, I want to see somebody like Al Ewing. Like it needs to be a big time writer who understands the Marvel universe. I could see that. Like no Donny Cates, and no shade to Donny Cates, but I wouldn't want to see what Donny Cates would do with the Fantastic Four. I would be curious to see what Chip would do with the Fantastic Four. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. That's something that I would I would be interested mm, to see. I'm open to that. <laughs> Once he's yeah. off Daredevil. And, you know, Mark Brooks has been doing the life of the Fantastic Four, and I want to see what that... Is it Mark, Mark Brooks? Russell. Mark Russell. Mark yes. Russell's been doing the... Uh, which Mark is Brooks is the artist. But such a fantastic yeah. and, series. And so that's why I think I'm like kind of on like the Chip train. It's because mm -hmm. I'd like to see somebody else who goes into the like heady conversation about yeah. it like and what they would do. But yeah, Mark Russell doing a freaking life of Fantastic Four is crazy. When I read Fantastic Four, I want to see you strip down Reed Richards. Like tear everything away from him. Like I really want to dive into his brain. I'm curious, have we ever had a female write the Fantastic Four to give Sue the power that she deserves over the men? I don't think so. I'm kind of curious what somebody like Trini Howard or Vita Ayala would do after writing these teen books Kelly for Thompson. Kelly Thompson. But we've got Vita and Trini have been doing these, these X-Men books. So they're good That's at writing true. these teen That's stories. True. So I'd be curious to see what they would do with that team mm. because they did give such power to so many of the 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 characters in the X-Men, I'd be curious to see how they would give power to the Fantastic Four. Kelly Thompson, you can just give her whatever and well, it's going to yeah, be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, the, uh, BJ said he would be interested in a Donnie Fantastic Four just to see the crazy they, adventure they went on, but Kelly would be amazing on Fantastic Four. Yeah. Yes, give Kelly Thompson the Fantastic Four. Let's see what happens. Let's let's I'm just in. we're voting on this right now. Let's do it. Kelly Thompson is is the next on Fantastic Four. We we voted here today. <laughs> this is happening. Um, comic book industry news. So obviously, paper shortage is still a thing. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see that a lot. Um, it's going to continue to pop up. It's only going to get worse. A cardboard shortage is a thing. Matt and I were looking for long boxes today because people keep asking and we haven't been able to find them in stock. We actually found Amazon sells them for $27 a box. That's how short we are on long boxes right now. That's crazy. They are $27 a box. Um, May or may not be in stock later on, uh, in the next month or so so matt and i are trying to like see if we can get some into the store but it's insane how how far spread and uh not easy to find that long boxes are right now because of that cardboard shortage so um who knows when that supply is going to come back if you're waiting on them if you find them somewhere like in the world get them uh it's crazy we're also um seeing a lot of things so we talked about the the image was not doing uh second prints correct uh matthew rosenberg actually did it like i was saying earlier today did a a a whole recap of the saga that is what's the furthest place from here and one of the things is is that the vinyl was considered originally open order yes and for that deluxe edition and then there was the vinyl shortage and you can go through and read matthew rosenberg's entirely uh entire thread yeah but the vinyl shortage happened and they were like on track to have them for everybody and then it got delayed and then it was like oh now there's vinyl there's still a vinyl shortage guess what allocations are going to occur and they've been working on this book for four years they originally like were going to come out in 20 february 2020 they actually went to the retailer summit to show everybody why they should get this book february 2020 not 2021 last year they were at the retailer summit then the industry shut down and then it came back and they were like okay well the records are like the vinyls are on track they're going to be printed then it then they weren't and so then we had the allocation issue and it was like okay well stores are going to get what they get like Mm -hmm. we don't really know but we're going to open up the second print to have any of the the amount of vinyls you want we're going to make sure they get printed well then image announced that there's no second prints here's the thing about that everybody's been like well they already announced this but they do fall in limbo matthew rosenberg does not even know like matthew and tyler do not even know if they will be printed or not there is a a certain wave right before them that was like oh these have already been ordered so they're coming out but the the new burns and um you know phenom x and things like that like i mean new burn is a huge book from chip zadarsky yeah and is sold out don't like at, at diamond don't know if there will be a second print and they actually don't know um if that deluxe edition will actually make it or not past the image we're not printing second print thing matthew rosenberg just tweeted that last night or no today sorry that was this afternoon good lord i don't know what time it is anymore they just <laughs> he just tweeted that today that they do not know if what's the furthest place from here's deluxe edition will actually get a second print or not um or just in general will what's the furthest place in, from here get a second print they yeah. were on that like oh well we're gonna put a second print out because the deluxe didn't get made for all the people who did order it and but they landed on the cusp and so they have not been told themselves whether or not that will happen okay so we don't know now the vinyl was our the deluxe edition was already delayed so that's already a thing in general and it's allocated we're getting one instead of the 15 that we ordered and that's the thing but now the deluxe edition we ordered 15 of we don't know if we'll actually get those at all and uh 
don't be mad at the creators. It's not their fault. Don't be mad at your LCS. It's not their fault. This is, there is a paper shortage. There is a vinyl shortage. There is a cardboard shortage. There is a shortage across the board of all, pro, of all those things. It's nobody's fault, but that's the thing that's happened. So, like, be understanding for all those people. Don't go online and attack Matthew Rosenberg and Tyler Boss. Please, 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 please. My only thing is, and there's obviously there's part of me as a collector that would want the vinyl. I also just want to hear those songs because yeah. they are new songs. Like, the first vinyl uh, has a new Jawbreaker song. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to hear that. So, if worse comes to worse... I would be okay with Matthew saying, "Hey, look, uh, we can't, here's we a can't do download. it. Yeah, here's a free digital download, um, and then they'll be up on streaming services at some point, or you can do a Bandcamp style mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, pay whatever you want, so we can help pay for these artists or pay for future artists. Right, buy songs from Bandcamp because the yeah. bands actually get the money. <laughs> yeah, and I I know that there are people out there who would be willing to pay for that mm-hmm. because. Uh, I like especially me. I've always been a big fan of of comic books that have a soundtrack to it. Absolutely. So you can kind of sit down and listen to music while you're reading the book. Uh, so yeah, if it's digital, I'm not going to be upset. I, obviously, I'm not going to be upset. Period. Right. But as long as I get to hear these songs, right? You then, just want to hear the songs. Yes. Absolutely. And so yeah, just know that they don't know. Poor Matthew Rosenberg and Tyler Boss have been working on this book for four years, and everything, like, every time they get it ready, something happens and something happens. Um, but, yeah, don't don't be upset about your creators. As Scott asked, short, short box is equally scarce. The plain white ones are. Uh, we have some graphic boxes in stock, so those are not scarce. They are existing here, but uh, the plain... How much are those? The... $12.99 okay. for the graphic short boxes. I think I'm about uh, to get one. Yeah, there's a couple of those. Uh, Matt, I know Ram was asking if we sell the Batman one in stock. Do we? Okay, Ram, we can get you that Batman one. Um, yeah, but there is, uh, there's a couple of, you know... It's situations where you're not going to be able to get... Uh, I'm going to write that down really fast. Where you're not going to be able to get the books that you wanted to get. And that is a thing where if there's something... And, and Matthew Rosenberg said it best. If there's something you know you're kind of interested in or that you know you might want, order it from your LCS. It's right. better to then go in honestly. like, And I'm going to say this. And most maybe most comic stores wouldn't. I would rather you tell me at this point with the shortages, I want this, and then change your mind and yeah. give me the book back than to not order it and then not get it because of paper shortages. I would rather take the chance and say, like, hey, like, I'm interested in what's the furthest place from here, number two. And I order what's the place, furthest place from here, number two, for you. And then you're like, never mind, I don't want it. I read issue one, it wasn't my favorite. Cool. That's fine, because now I at least have a copy of What's the Furthest Place from Here, number two, whereas I wouldn't have Mm -hmm. with the paper shortages if I don't order in advance those books. And so right now, if you're like, I think I want this book, tell your LCS. If that's us, please tell me. Do not assume that Matt and I assume you want it. If you picked up a book off the wall, I say this all the time, but if you pick up a book off the wall and you grab it, I don't know that you want the next issue. Right. I don't, I can't, I cannot read your mind on whether or not you enjoyed it. A lot of times people come in and they're like, I didn't even read it yet. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to pull the next one for you (laughs) because I don't know if you want it. And I order books three weeks out. So any of the books we talked about tonight, if you enjoyed them, I'm ordering them tomorrow. Ordering them tomorrow for the next issue. So if you are like, I enjoyed this book I picked up on Wednesday... I need to know tomorrow to order you, like by tomorrow, to order you the next issue. Because I don't know if you haven't already subscribed to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to guess, but if I miss you, I miss you. Because I didn't, you didn't tell me. And there's a lot of times where I pick books for people and then they don't, like, tell me if they like them or not. And I'm like, I got to remember in the top of my head. And people always come in and they're like, how do you remember all the books that people wanted? I'm like, I get lucky gonna be honest 
You were on this live stream where I just drank an entire bottle of wine. I'm getting lucky <laughs> here, people. Um, it works best if you tell me, add this to my sub list. Like BJ did earlier, like, please add what's the furthest place from here to my sub list if I'm not already on there. Do that. Tell me you want it on your sub list because I am happy to order it for you. But if I don't know, I don't know. Yes, Brett's like, I need all Venoms available. That's why I gave you all. I was ready for you with all those incentives this week, Brett, when you walked in. Um, yeah, let me know. Like, yeah. if you are in for something, I need to know you're in for something because I will pull it for you, but I got to know. And I don't know if you don't tell me. Um, it is, mind reading is a gift I pretend I have, but I don't necessarily actually do so. So please let me know, especially like this week when the Diamond Comics came in and I had 45 minutes or so before the store opened. I'm going to like, I'm winging that. I'm throwing it in there. Like I've got, uh, <laughs> if I, I've got as many books as I have on the list and then I'm just trying to like remember as much as I can off the top of my, my, my head. Yeah. So let me know what you're interested in. Put it on your sub list, especially now with paper shortages. If you think you might be interested in something, put it on your sub list. Make sure it gets ordered because they're only printing more so now than ever to what's ordered. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Matthew Rosenberg confirmed that. He said, you know, like with initial orders, we thought this is what we needed and we printed that. And then the FOC came in and everybody added a bunch to it. And we were like, oh, we can't complete that order. And that's why allocation issues occurred. Yeah. So tell me out of the previous catalog. Get a previous catalog. You don't want to order a previous catalog you don't want to pay for it. Come into the store. Go to previewsworld.com. Don't care. Just send me your previous order list. If you want to prepay for it, you can save on it. If you don't want to prepay for it, cool. I don't care. I just want to add it to your sub list and make sure I get those books ordered so that they know what to print because paper is scarce and we want to make sure it gets printed for you. <laughs> That's the Shannon rant of the day. Yes. Uh, other comic industry news. Diamond got hacked. Diamond got hacked. If you didn't know... Uh, we mentioned at the beginning of the show, Diamond had the ransomware on him. Hopefully this week's books are here on time uh, because uh, I would feel really bad for Josh if they're not because uh, that is the other bit of news that I think is important to say. Matt and I will not be here Thursday through Sunday. Um, Josh, if you've been into our store before, you've probably met Josh it's been a minute, but Josh will be running the store from Thursday through Sunday. Who knows? Maybe Phil will pop in and help him if he's feeling generous with his time. Uh, Phil's shaking his head no. But Josh will be here uh, Thursday through Sunday to make sure that you get your books if you um, aren't here on Wednesday. Matt and I will, of course, be here for New Comic Book Day, but then we will be gone um, having a mini moon, I guess you could say. Kind of a little miniature honeymoon um slash work trip as we uh head back to sarasota florida but josh will be on site um all weekend long to help you get your comic books so if there is something hopefully the books come in on time because i don't want josh to have to uh process all of those comics on him on his own <coughs> uh if he does josh is a master of figuring it out and he will have your list and he will make sure you get your books so uh just make sure you get all of your requests in to me as early as possible so i can make sure that josh has access to them in case the comics do come in late because diamond is still trying to catch up um after their ransomware attack last week gotta put those firewalls up yeah That's and all i can say i have one more <laughs> announcement scout Comics just opened a headquarters at their corporate office. They opened a comic book shop that is just Scout titles. Sweet. I know. It's super cool. So, like, their mature title section is all, like, the Black Caravan, but then they have their Scoot section for all the kids stuff. It looks exactly like nice. the comic book store, but it's only filled with Scout comics. It's 45 minutes from Sarasota. <laughs> just saying. So, uh, Scout Comics <laughs> just launched their store. Congratulations, Scout. We we love Scout and all the books they're putting out. Um, I can't wait. They actually just had a huge grand opening celebration for that store that included, like, uh, Joseph Smalk and Jonathan Hedrick and all of the big Scout writers mm -hmm. signing this, last, this weekend. It was actually yesterday. I'm super jealous. And a Scout coffee shop, too. Yes. And they have a podcast studio on site for their Scout podcast. 
Um, super in. Can't wait to visit. I'm hoping maybe, maybe who knows? Maybe next weekend we'll get to go down there and we'll we'll share y'all uh, some information about what it looks like. Um, but congratulations to Scout. I love seeing publishers come up with new ways to get their books in the hands of people. So congrats to them. Yes. Uh, it's super cool. And now we have a prize for you. He's waiting for me. Prize! Since Scout is celebrating the uh, launch of their new store, I've got two Scout books for you. Um, Rabid, Rabid World, which is a really cool, like, crazy book you got to check out. And I'm not going to... And Midnight Western Theater, which is one of my favorite Scout books of the year. Uh, for all of you who are fans of like the vampire-esque genre, Midnight Western Theater is definitely the one. And this is a question that has absolutely nothing to do with uh, what I just brought, but I actually forgot to bring the copies of them. But anyway, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles launched uh, from Mirage Studios in 1984. Shortly after that, they licensed the toys to Playmates which is a really cool toy company I'm a big fan of. Uh, between 1988 and 1992, how much money was made off of Turtles toys? Lots. It is a lot. Uh, if you did not know, you can you can definitely find that on the Ninja Turtles Wikipedia page. Um, but between 1988 and 1992, how much money was made off of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toy line? If you can tell me that, you win both of these Scout comic books. And I promise you, you want to read them because they're great. Um, Midnight Western Theater, like I said, is one of my favorite Scout titles of the year. Um, definitely flying too far under the radar for, radar for how good it is. Yeah. Scout's been killing it. Again, yeah. these indie, these indie publishing companies like you said, are just... Golden Age. It is. It definitely feels that way. I feel, because uh, even when I got back into comics, you know, with, with Image and Saga and all those books, Sex Criminals and stuff like that, when those books were coming out, I was like, oh my god, I, I didn't know comics could be this great, and it's just gotten better. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Brett was first. It was $1.1 billion. Dang. Was made between 1988 and 1992 off of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Playmates toy line. Uh, good freaking lord and nobody is surprised um yeah i definitely agree with what you're just saying this is it was one of those things that really you know there was a while in there where it was like oh yeah indie comics also exist and then suddenly it was like huh guys indie comics like are you reading them because they're yeah. the best and people come in to the store all the time and they're like where are your indie comics i'm like Everywhere. Yeah. My entire <laughs> store is indie comics. Pick a section, grab a comic. It's probably an indie book because I, I live and breathe indie comics, and uh, I think you should too, no matter what you enjoy. Do you like superheroes? Great. There's indie superheroes. Do you like, you know, true crime? Here's some true crime. Do you like horror? Here's some horror. Do you like romantic comedy? I got mm -hmm. that too. I've got it all. And uh, it's all in indie comics, and they're amazing and wonderful, and I'm so happy. Um, uh, we didn't talk about the Disney Plus Day, but uh, if you guys enjoyed all of those amazing announcements, just know that there is more to come from all of those Disney Plus announcements. We'll talk about some of the books that we have that you need, but uh, She-Hulk, Secret Invasion, Moon Knight, Agatha Harkness is getting her own show, Miss Marvel, Marvel Zombies. Uh, so many incredible shows yeah. coming from Disney Plus, and you are definitely going to want to dive into some of these great classic books that cover those, because if you know anything about the MCU, it's that they always hint back to some of the classic right. books, and so now is a great time to dive into those before they're too hard to find. Um, so let us know if you're on the hunt for any of those books, both in trade or uh in individual issue form, now's a great time to start scooping them up because they are just going to get bigger and harder to find from here. Um, other than that, it was a great week for comics. An even more amazing book uh, week is coming up. Come to the shop on Wednesday. Check it out. Like I said, let us know if there's something you want to subscribe to. Um, we'll add that to your list immediately. If you don't have a subscription with us, now's a great time to start one. Um, and... 
we'll see you on Wednesday. If we don't, we'll see you not next weekend because Matt and I will be out of town and yes. Phil's not going to do this by himself. I don't know how to set this up. If I could set this up by myself, I would do a solo live stream. Well, I might teach him <laughs> before we go. But, uh, I can't we, zoom in, though. I can't, right, you can't, I can't do, do all do the both. zooms. Right. So we won't, uh, we won't be here next weekend. Matt and I will probably go live at random points in time just to kind of show you some cool things that we're experiencing while we're gone. Um, but who knows? Maybe not. <laughs> um, depends on if we go to the scout store. If we go to the scout store, I'm going live. Um, but other than that, uh, we will see you this Wednesday in the store, or we will see you um, next week. after that. Have a great week. Um, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.